run stop, and boy, can he pound the baseball. He can. The a and m offense has stumbled a bit out of the gate, but not so much for this junior transfer from Arizona State, Hunter Haas. He leads the Aggies with a 400 batting average and a blistering on-base percentage of 600. Haas knows how to get on base. He is also a slick fielding shortstop who has yet to commit an error in his first 10 games of the season. And on the other side for Texas Tech, Austin Green is not lacking in any offensive category. He's hitting 395, 15 hits, and 21 RBI. Yeah, one of the top junior college hitters in his region last season. The question mark for Green was, would it translate to the D1 level? Well, that question's been answered as Green has put up some big-time numbers for Tim Tadlock's Red Raiders. He leads Tech with 21 RBI for the season and has been hot in this tournament going four for eight. We are closing in on showtime. The first pitch between the Fighting Aggies and the Red Raiders is coming up next on AT&T Sportsnet. Here at the Astros Foundation, we strive to harness the passion of our fans to be a force for good in our community. Through key fundraising efforts like our Community Leaders Program and the Diamond Dreams Gala, we're able to redistribute millions of dollars back to support the community that supports us all season long. Log on to astros.com slash foundation to find out how you can affect positive change in our community. 2022 World Series Champion! <laughs> It's one thing to reach the pinnacle and another to hold the throne. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, but we're used to the weight. We've built a legacy. Now let's cement the dynasty. We're ready. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. And that right there is the ceremonial pitch tonight to get the Shriners Children's College Classic underway in our finale tonight between Texas A&M and Texas Tech. The Red Raiders are the home team tonight, so let's check out the batting order brought to you by Syntex tonight. Hunter Haas will lead off and play shortstop, followed by Jack Moss, Austin Bost, Dennis Targotch, Werner, Lavalette, Stanley Tucker, Caden Kent, the son of Jeff Kent, and J.D. Gregson will be behind the plate. And then on the mound, we have Tabor Fast, a lefty, Pat. There he is. 6'1", 205 freshman from the state of Washington. Fast is making only his second collegiate start. He's got great pitch ability, a traditional three-pitch mix. Fastball that sits in the low 90s. Now, Tim Tadlock has two solid pieces to that weekend rotation in Brendan Gurton and Mason Molina. Can Tucker Fast be that key third part? This will be a big test for him tonight versus the Aggies. Yeah, Tabor Fast comes into this one with a 5.14 ERA. We set the defense now for the Red Raiders. You see Hester, Carter, Harrelson in the outfield. Then it's Bazell, Burns, Green, Cash, Fast on the mound, and White is behind the plate. So we are ready to play ball at Minute Maid Park tonight. The Aggies taking on the Red Raiders. Big crowd on hand tonight. And the first delivery from Fast is inside. Ball one. Second offering also inside. 
right there to Hunter Haas, who's leading off for the Aggies. First three batters, Hunter Haas, Jack Moss, and Austin Boast for the fighting Texas Aggies. Tried to burn it, but it goes up, and that's an easy out as Tabor Fast made the catch one out in the ball game. Yeah, fastball up in the zone, tried to lay the butt down to drag for a base hit, and kind of catches the top of the barrel, and easy pop out. Right back to fast on the mound. You know, last night, which you, you were witness to up close and personal, Haas was on base five times. So to get that young man out yeah, that's to a big start deal. this game is a really, really big deal. So that will bring Jack Moss up to the plate for the Aggies as the officials want to get something out of the outfield over there. So we are set and ready to go with the action. Jack Moss at the plate. Starts him off with a high one inside. Moss hitting 342 as he steps in tonight. Thanks. Low and away with that one, so he's behind in the count early on. You know, talking about Jack Moss, I got a chance to talk to James Mouton tonight, and we'll get back to that in a second, but he's one of the guys he's scouting tonight. He's scouting for the San Francisco Giants, and the third pitch is right down the pipe for a strike. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, the scouts are here, I think, to see quite a few of these guys, but certainly Moss, one of those players, a really toolsy guy that uh, really has one of those uh, Wade Box types of approach, great command of the strike zone is the way Jim Schlossner describes him. And, well, he's one of those guys you could easily see Butch that's projectable to that next level. Ball is low. Three and one is the count now to Jack Moss. One nice. of one of the, a lot of Astros fans will remember James Mouton from his days that's of right. playing outfield here in Houston. This time it's a foul ball down the right line, right field line. And now the count is full. But yeah, Mouton played outfield here, did a great job for the Astros, and now he spent the last 13 years scouting for the Giants. Yeah, great guy, Moo, and right he's at the ballpark tonight. 3-2 offering is high. Take your base, Jack Moss. So Moss, who that's one of the things James said, by the way, he said that guy is extremely disciplined at the plate, and we got to see a little bit of it right there. Yeah, that's a, exactly right. That was the ammo on him. He's got discipline across his back. He doesn't have Moss on the back of his nameplate that says discipline. <laughs> How about these uh, Aggie uniforms, Butch? They're outstanding. You know, the first time they wore those were last Sunday against Portland. The reviews were great. As we have Austin Bose stepping up to the plate. First pitch to Bose. And the Aggies honoring the Corps of Cadets. This is a special uniform. They each have the, the patch on the left side, the AM patch that the core wears on the right side. Each part of the core is defined by the patch on their left sleeve. The only one delivery is a strike call, so the count is even at one. Yeah, you mentioned that jersey features a patch from C Company, one of the six major outfits in the Fighting Texas Aggie Band. So each jersey will feature a different core patch on the left sleeve. Yeah, really unique. Uniform by the Aggies. And they're swinging through that breaking ball from Fast. Yeah, Fast is doing a good job on the mound here. Yeah, Boaster's come in really swinging a hot bat. His home runs in the last couple of games for him. He's just heating up. So the runner will go from first to third. A great job at the plate by Austin Boast as he slaps it in the left field for a base hit. Now Jim Schlossnagel putting his runner in motion, Jack Moss, and you know, easily gets to third base on that sharp single to left center. The only question for Boast was, but he tried to bust it out for second base and gets the rounds first and gets back. But just like that, the Aggies with runners at first and third, only one out here in the first inning. So that will bring up Ryan Targotch to the plate. He's playing second base tonight. He's a valuable young man. Can play a lot of positions for the Aggies. Tonight he's playing second. He's also played some first base in the series. Has been a designated hitter also. And a big time run producer for the Aggies. 
to win the SEC and RBI last season in SEC games and big time cleanup hitter for AF. So Targosh up with a runner at third and another runner at first. So he has an opportunity to pick up an early RBI for Texas AM. Tabor Fast would like nothing better than a double play ball here. Fast That's defense in double play territory. Fast back to first base again. Trying to keep Austin Bose close over there. Goes to the Oski pit. Just missed. A little high. Ball two. You know, just to finish up about the uniforms there, uh, the back of each jersey will feature a core value recognized by Texas A&M's core of cadets. And this one is on the ground, the shortstop, 52. The third of first is in time for the double play. So a great job by the Red Raiders to get out of a big jam. We'll be back at the bottom of the first in just a minute. This March, we celebrate the women across the Root Sports and AT&T Sports Network's families who continually break barriers and move our industry forward. You know, there are still challenges. I think it's come a long way. I don't think very much can happen unless you have women in the room where it happens. Behind the scenes. Three, two, one. And in front of the camera. Welcome back to Mariners Baseball. Fire up the fountains. She's gone. There's been so much excitement and anticipation about finally getting fans into Climate Pledge Arena. Their voices and unique perspectives shape our networks. It kind of feels a little bit like, you know, a first date. Do I have anything in my teeth? Am I talking too much? Am I not talking enough? Redefining roles while inspiring the next generation to follow their passion. The more I started watching broadcasts and, and then the more I saw women being a part of these broadcasts, I thought that is what I want to do. That opportunity has to be available for other people to see that this is an option. Catch Astros spring training action on AT&T Sportsnet. Bottom of the first here at Minimade Park and the Red Raiders come to the plate. The batting order brought to you by Texas Crown Whiskey. Nolan Hester leading off and playing in left field. Then it's Harrelson, Bazell, Green. Ty Coleman is the DH tonight. Gavin Cash at first base, the UT transfer. Hudson White is behind the plate. And Dylan Carter is in center field. And Will Burns tonight playing some shortstop. And on the mound for the Aggies will be Chris Cortez. And the number one thing I've been hearing about this guy, he'll blow you away. Oh, he can light it up, Butch. miles per hour. <laughs> he can light up the radar gun. Yeah, the 6'1", 205 sophomore in Las Vegas, Nevada. You know, he's got one of those uh, electric arms. One of the best you see in college baseball. Cortez features that upper 90s fastball that Butch was referred to. The secondary pitches have been the challenge, but he's got improved command with those pitches. He logged some high leverage innings last year for the Aggies. And Jim Schlossagel believes this is his improved command will really allow him to secure a spot in the weekend rotation. So Cortez will face Hester. Harrelson and Bazell to get it underway, and he starts off Hester with the ball outside, so a 1 and 0 count to him. Hester coming into this game, batting 257 for the Red Raiders. Ball two outside. That may just, we're early, but that may be some of the control, control issues you were talking about, Pat. Well, that's the challenge for any starters, just to settle in for the first inning, get your rhythm going. You know, this that adrenaline rush you get when you get to the, the rubber. It doesn't matter how much you prepare in the bullpen on the side. You know, when you get on that game mound and the white lights turn on, it's, it can be a different deal sometimes. 3 0 count. Ball is over for a strike. Ball. Good job by Hester taking it all the way. 
So the 3-1 delivery. Swung on. Ground ball to shortstep. Hunter House over to Jack Moss, and that is the first out of the year. Well, so far, a long guy to hit it to on this Texas a and Moss, as we mentioned, without an error of the season, he has been perfect at short. Nice job by Cortez to get back into that count. Get that ground ball. And uh, Nolan Hester had that advantage count on him. So that will bring up Gabe Gage Harrelson, the freshman. Starts him off with the ball outside. Harrelson is hitting 380 coming into this one. Yeah, great start to this freshman's career. And not often times you see, Butch, a freshman jump into a D1 lineup, especially one like Texas Tech offers, but he has done just that. He's been phenomenal. Now batting in the two slot with that high average. Yeah, Texas Tech with a lot of veterans, but I noticed in your game yesterday they started five freshmen. Yeah, there's been a lot of holes to fill for Tim Tadlock's Red Raiders. Strike delivered, making it a 2-1 count to Gage Harrelson. Pushes it all the way out to 3-1 and one after that pitch. As you see, Coach Tim Tadlock, 11 years at Texas Tech. Had to hit the transfer portal and also the flat and put some of those freshmen that we see like Dave Harrelson, but did a great job of filling in some holes left by guys like Jace Young and Cole Stillwell, Easton Morrell, Kurt Wilson, a lot of innings to fill for his Red Raiders. So the three and two offering is ball four. And Harrelson will take his base. We'll take the job down first base after the base on ball. <laughs> Kevin Bazell, next batter up for the Red Raiders. And I tell you what, looking at this whole series, I don't know if there's been anybody who's done more for their team than this guy has done. Yeah, Bazell swinging a hot bat. And, you know, one of those uh, classified freshmen came over as a transfer from Dallas Baptist. And he has been huge for... Catlock's Red Raiders. Step right into that three hole as a freshman. Doing a great job. That's ball one to the freshman from Rockwall, Texas. Bazell batting 378 as he steps in tonight. Cortez offers. Beautiful catch right there to even the count of one and one. And a nice slider from Cortez. And you've got to get geared up for that high 90s fastball when he drops that, Mr. Nasty on it. <laughs> he makes it tough. Cortez 1-0 so far this year with a 5.40 ERA. And that's another ball inside. Make it ball two. And 97 on the gun out of a stretch. <laughs> another reason why Mouton is here. He's here to see for that pitch tonight. <laughs> this guy's going to be a high draft pick at some point. This one is chopped back to the middle. The scoop by Jack Moss couldn't quite come up with it. So they get the fielder's choice over at second base. Well, watch the athletic move by Cortez off the mound. That ball was jammed Bazell pretty good, but how about throwing off his back foot? And he's forced out Hunter Haas. And was not able to complete the double play, but uh, really athletic move by the Aggie pitcher. He got off of that hill in a hurry. Another ball. That'll bring up Austin Green, who's playing second base tonight for the Red Raiders. Cortez delivers, and it's swung on, and it's going to be down the left field line and into the seats. Ball ball. You know, both of these teams... You know, the pitchers are going to have the work cut out for them tonight because these are two teams that can score a lot of runs when they get it going. Yeah, no doubt both offenses can put up crooked numbers. And we'll challenge both these guys tonight. This one is a ground ball to second base and the scoop to first. And that will do it for the Red Raiders here in the bottom of the first. Good job by Chris Cortez. We'll be back with the second inning coming up next.
What's his deal? Oh, him? He just got cash back shopping with Rackadin. Oh, I know the feeling. Cash back's where it's at. I just never dance in public. Here at the Astros Foundation, we strive to harness the passion of our fans to be a force for good in our community through key fundraising efforts like our Community Leaders Program and the Diamond Dreams Gala. We're able to redistribute millions of dollars back to support the community that supports us all season long. Log on to astros.com slash foundation to find out how you can affect positive change in our community. 2022 World Series Champion! <laughs> It's one thing to reach the pinnacle, and another to hold the throne. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, but we're used to the weight. We've built a legacy. Now, let's cement the dynasty. We're ready. We are ready to start the second inning here on a beautiful night at Minute Maid Park. As you see Tabor Fast on the mound. The big 6'1", 205-pound freshman. As Pat said, he's making his second start tonight, so they're hoping to get some innings out of him. Leading off right there is Trevor Warner. And he takes a ball. Warner, of course, from the Houston area, went to Klein High School. Pass misses again. You know, Warner was another guy the scouts, and I was sitting at a table with a bunch of them. So <laughs> he was another guy they had a lot of interest in. You were getting the inside scoop, weren't you, Butch? This one is hit hard. And driven down the left field line, but he's going to be into the seats. Foul ball, but he showed you a little bit that has all these scouts interested yeah. in him. He's got some pop, and you know, his head coach, Jim Schlossregel, said one of the most tooled-out guys he's ever coached. He has all five tools. We can see uh, just how smooth the swing is, swing is and how quick that ball jumps off his bat. The 2-1 offering was low, so make it a 3-1 and one count to Trevor Werner. And that's low ball for Taking some film. I'm check that last swing and go, man, did that ball jump off his bat or what? He got a rhythm on that one. Wow. Jace Lavalette will now step up to the plate for the Aggies. Freshman from Katy, Texas. What a beautiful off speed pitch that was. Tabor fast with the first pitch strike there. First counts. Yeah, nice breaking ball. That's a big bender that fast offers. But pitching these Aggie hitters backwards, he'll get ahead with the breaking pitch. He's going to use his fastball off of that. That's how he duplicates that breaking pitch. He's doing a good job mixing it up here to Jace Lavalette. Jace Lavalette lined that base hit into right field. Now that's a pitch that Taper Fast will want back. It's an 0-2 breaking ball. Just kind of hangs it over the middle of the plate. You can see his catcher, Hudson White, trying to get that ball down and away off the pitch. Fast hangs it. Lavalette bangs it. Now the Aggies first and third, no outs. Big threat going on now for Texas A&M. Tabor Fast will have Stanley Tucker coming up to the plate. And he goes over the first to keep the runner close. There's no outs of the inning. Tech's going to play deep at short. They'll concede the run if they try to get the double play turn on Stanley Tucker. Tucker, the junior from Richmond, Texas. And the runner goes from first. The throw down at second. Not going to get him. So stolen base for the Aggies. And Trevor Warner. Excuse me, uh, Chase Lafay Lafayette. And now it's going to be interference on the batter, it looks 
like. Wow. How about that one on the throw to second? Yeah. Jim Schlossberg got the dugout quickly on that interference call. And they called it on Stanley Tucker in the box. It was a Ron Teague, the home plate umpire, that signaled it. And then Schloss is hot. Let's see if Tucker steps out of the box on the interference. Oh, it looked like the bat. He held the bat out. That's where Hudson White made contact with it. And now Tucker's out automatically on the interference call. Let's take a look. See, did he lean in a little bit? Yeah, watch the bat kind of extend and make contact with Hudson White's mask as he was throwing. Well, I think that's the right call, Butch. It's not one you often see with the bat making contact. It's usually the, the player that makes contact with the throw. Pitch high ball. That was Jace Lavalette trying to get into second base on the steal. He would have been saved. Oh, yeah. But instead, he has to go back to first base. And this is Caden Kent, the son of former major leaguer Jeff Kent. He's played some outfield in this series. He's played some infield. He showed he can, he can do it all for this team. Yeah, now with one out in the inning, Tech is going to still play back up the middle. But you're right, Butch. Lavalette had that base stolen easy. So that's a huge play here early on in favor of the Red Raiders. And that is ball two from Tabor Fast. He's trying to work out of a big jam here in the second. Yeah, going back to Stanley Tucker, there was nothing intentional about him sticking his bat at the plate. I think it's what he typically does after a pitch is thrown, but that bat definitely made contact with, with White's mask. You can see it clearly on the replay. It was subtle, but I agree with you, Pat. It looked like the bat. He did come in a little bit with the bat, so he's out on the play. Throw goes back to first base. See Ken on the foul tip on that last pitch, so it's a two and one count. Bass came in with a 5.14 ERA. We got him picked off. Throw to second base, and he's going to be out. So a great job by Texas Tech on the defensive end. Yeah, great read by Tabor Fast on the pickoff move. Felt like Lavalette had gotten a little bit of a head start on that steal attempt. Tries to make that swim tag, and well done by Will Burns to stay with the tag and apply it. Lavalette out on the pickoff of what turned out to be a pretty promising inning for the Aggies. He's just turned upside down. So that's a swing and a miss by Kent. The freshman from Austin, Texas. So now it's a 2 2 count to Caden Kent. Runner at third. Kent bounces one. Foul ball down the right field line. Boy, the Aggies have had some opportunities in uh, both of these innings to get this game started. And they're still trying to have a, a chance here to punch that run in home. Taylor Fast has really pitched well with runners in scoring position. He's made some high-stress pitches, but he's been sharp to get him. Let's see if he can do it again here. Kent doing a good job to stay alive at the plate. You know, those scouts I was telling you about, they also said this young man may be the best hitter on this team, and he is extremely young. Maybe. There's no doubt. He's got the heritage you talked about Jeff Kent's son. Swing and a miss on the 2-2 count. Tabor Bass works out of another jam and he's fired up. Watch me. Watch me tumble, jump, and soar. When our squad is on point, we own the floor. Dazzling stunts and dances are my jam. Pain once caused issues, but they had a plan. A life-changing brace with no surgery to fear. Activity without limits, one more reason to cheer. Watch me. Industry-leading scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Watch me paddle, carve, and drop in. Water is my canvas. Let the good times begin. Perfect sets and barrels I chase. 
where sand becomes surf, waves set the pace. Childhood accident couldn't ruin my vibes. Thanks to one special place, I've never been more alive. Watch me. Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Out here, you're either lunch or you're enjoying it. The all-powerful Kia SUVs assembled in Georgia. Kia, movement that inspires. Help provide life-changing care to children who need your help by logging on to collegeclassic.org. And for each $100 donation, you get a free Marucci mini bat. And with a 250 or more donation, you get a full-size bat, the Marucci bat. So go to collegeclassic.org and donate today and get your bat. We are underway here in the bottom of the sink. There it is. It is. That's got it. Bat, it? It is. It's gorgeous. Need to get you one of those. Jacob Berry. <laughs> I like that. Yep, the all-tournament team from LSU last year, but uh, if you wanted one of those bats, you get your name on it, not Jacob Berry's name. So, great collector's item here by Marucci. Great to put in your room with all your memorabilia. It'll work. Two. Oh, count. And a ball is hit. High and deep to center. Going way back, and it's going to be just a long for Ty Kaufman. Yeah, they don't call the Ty They call it the graveyard here at Minimate. They go dead center. You've got to really bust it to get it out of that 409 center field wall. And nice job by Stanley Tucker to track it down and get the big loud out in the one on Coleman. You're right about that. Tucker did a great job out there. Another ball on the way. By the way, our umpires for tonight, the home plate umpire, Ron Teague, at third base, Clint Fagan. Second base is Eric Gaucher. And at first, Michael Durantes. Another ball outside from Cortez. That was Ty Coleman, as I said, the DH fly, deep fly ball to center earlier. Now we have Gavin Cash at the plate. The transfer from UT, he's also been having a fine tournament. Yeah, he came in hitting hot, and he's just put together a great young season here. Of course, the batting average, 489 coming into the night. The 3-0 delivery is a strike call to Gavin Cash, the first baseman for Texas Tech. Got a lot of pop. Four home runs already leads the Red Raiders in RBI at 20. Low and inside, so it's ball four. Cash will head down the first base for the Red Raiders. As you look at Cortez, you know, he's been working on that changeup, which is something you would obviously know a lot about, Pat. He came in with that big fastball. You can blow a lot of people, but now that changeup seems to be getting better and better. Well, the command is getting better. It's uh, not a way to use that pitch. It's a good shot of the slider for a strike. Hudson White stepping to the plate now for the Red Raiders, the catcher for tonight. As you know well, Butch, the separator for guys that pitch at this level to the next level is really how well can you command the off speed. And he has made some jumps. Beautiful pitch right there from Cortez. Make it an 0 2 count. Aggie pitching coach Nate Yeski known as one of the better pitching coaches in all of college baseball. He's just done a great job developing Cortez. Foul ball, so the 0-2 count will stay. Yeah, that's the interesting thing about Cortez. You know, he had committed to Arizona first and then changed his mind and decided to come to Texas A&M. Well, it's been a good decision. He has uh, really developed into more of a complete pitcher. So White to second base, and the force at second is out. A good defensive play by the Aggies. Ryan Targosh over there with a nice stop in the force play at second. Yeah, outstanding. Had to go horizontal to stop that one, and the ball was just on the tip of his glove. Just barely had time to flip over. A wild throw to 
will stop Hunter Haas, but Haas was able to corral it. Gets the force out with the charging cash to second base. So Dylan Carter now at the plate. Ball inside, down and low. Carter in center field tonight for the Red Raiders. The junior from Flower Mound, Texas. You know, Hoff did so well in that last play. Was he turned into a first baseman. He knew he wasn't going to be able to turn two. Stretched out to get that throw from Targosh. Smart play. Both teams have had activity on the base path. And it's outside on 2-0. So make it a 3-0 count. Carter batting 462. And that is outside. So it's another walk issued by Cortez. Now, this is the command issue that we've been talking about, and third walk of the game already. We're going to get a visit from his pitching coach, Nate Yeski, and if Yeski can get him dialed back into that strike zone. What does a pitching coach do in a situation like this, Ben? Yeah, you know, most of the time, they're, they're going to remind you to slow the game down, take a breath, to really focus in, just like you're playing catch with the catcher. Just remind you of the simple things you've done over the course of your development to just throw strikes that's really there's the glove see it hit it we're just playing catch here and sometimes just uh, the ability of coach to simplify what's going on in the moment just be a great reminder that uh, it's not difficult when you just think about just playing catch with that catcher man. in his last two starts Cortez has thrown 83 pitches in one and 94 in the other so they were expecting this young man to eat up some innings tonight still may do it yep Eight batters face so far, only one first pitch strike. That's typically not a good formula for success for pitchers. Okay, Will Burns steps up to the plate now for the Red Raiders with two on and two out. First pitch strike. Nice job from Cortez. Cortez, low and away. As he faces Will Burns, who comes up tonight with a 143 batting average. He has two base runners on, but two outs. Swing and a miss. Good pitch on the outside to the right there. A little smoother from Cortez. And you know what his instructions he got from pitching coach Nate Yeski is. Oftentimes you tell yourself slow the body down, but you don't want to say slow. You want to say smooth smooth the body quick arm it's Much smoother than that previous pitch The one two delivery Swung on and missed So Cortez works himself out of a jam with a strikeout to end the inning High heat Cortez this game remains tied after two New cars are expensive. Rock Auto helps you fix the car you have with body parts, interior parts, and more. Do road trips, not car payments. All the parts your car will ever need, Rock Auto. I don't think I ever felt intimidated, but it was an eye-opener that every place I have gone to, I have literally been the only full-time female in production. When I first got in this business and I first would talk to interns and everything, every seemed like every female, it was on air. That's all they wanted to do. And I get that because when I was in college, I was on air and I was thinking that the route, that's the route I was going. Colleges and schools and internships, they're doing a very good job of understanding that, that it's just not the talent. It takes a whole bunch of people to put what we do on the air. I think when I first came into this business, that wasn't there. That is where we've changed, where now I see a lot of younger females trying to get into this business, where their first thought is not on air talent. They are looking at the other positions. They're looking like, oh, I can be a camera person. Hey, I can be a producer. I can be an editor. They want to be behind the scenes, just like when I first started. 
Go beyond the court with Rockets All Access. Your backstage pass to the team all season long with exclusive player interviews, detailed team analysis, and more. Rockets All Access. New episodes every Wednesday on AT&T Sportsnet. Welcome back to Minute Maid Park. Butch Alcindor along with Pat Combs, former Phillies lefty. And as you can see, help us reach our goal right there for Shriners Children's. And you see we're up to 80% of that goal. Just go to collegeclassic.org and help us out. Make your donation tonight. Wow, getting close, Butch. Almost there. Yeah, we're getting very close. Yep. Tabor Fax gets it started with a low drive. And it's a base hit to left on the play by J.D. Gregson for the Aggies. So Gregson, the catcher, comes up and connects. Yeah, Gregson aggressive, swinging at that high fastball offering from fast. And a nice job. He's wasting time getting on base. Now, the problem for the Aggies has not been getting on base. They've had three runners in scoring position. It's been advancing them across the plate that's been the issue. It's a theme they want to avoid here in the coming inning. Throw to first. We go back to the top of the batting order now with Hunter Haas stepping up for the Aggies. He's 0 for 1 in this game. Popped out his first time. Kevin Mazzell squeezing third baseline a bit. The Red Raider third baseman thinking Haas may be thinking bunt. Haas, one of those great situational hitters for the Aggies. Of course, a leadoff guy, but as you can imagine, he laid out a pretty good ball. First offering to Haas is ball one. Let's show it there. Ball two. You know, Haas, one of those guys I mentioned before that he got on all five times last night, and that was the second time. We're early in the baseball season, and it's the second time he's been up five times in the game and got on base. <laughs> he's got a knack for doing that. Get on base percentage indicative how often he finds himself on base. That's a strike call right there from Tabor Fast. Jim Schlossdagel still has some options here with a 2-1 count. So he want to try to advance Gregson, put him in motion, possibly hit and run here. Let's see if the Aggies dial up. Throw back to first. Tech thinking the same thing. Something may be on. Lost a great contact hitter. If you were going to put the guy in motion, this might be the time to do it with Haas at the play. Yeah, great count. Although fast has been working behind most of the night, still coming back and throwing strikes. This one's popped up. High and on the left side of the infield, and the third baseman, Kevin Brazell, calls, and he puts it away for the end. Brazell, a former catcher, can still back up. Again, yeah, this is a catcher as well, but uh, knows how to handle a pop up. Good job by Flashnake over there. Moving him to third base. You're right, he was originally a catcher. And they moved him over to third to get that back in the lineup. So that will bring up Jack Moss to the plate. Moss walked his first time, and Fast starts him off with the ball. You know, Tim Tadlock still trying to figure out some of the pieces to the defense and the lineup, but he's got some great options, as you mentioned, Butch, with these Red Raiders. A lot of fresh faces, freshmen in the lineup. Zell, one of those guys, and came in as a, as a catcher, but they uh, saw how he was striking the ball so well in the fall. They said, we got to get this guy in the lineup. Where can we put him? We can play third base now. You know, if you can hit, they will find you a position. <laughs> I've always said that. Let's go hit. One and one, and smash this part at first, and the throw to second base gets away from the shortstop over there. That is Hester. Could not scoop it up, and so the Yankees have something going again. Nice job by Gavin Cash to make the stop and take the quick out at first base. That retires Moss, but did not quite make the throwing lane, and that's where he could have had a chance to step inside the bag there for a better throwing lane and didn't do that. That caused that wild throw. Burns could not come up with it. 
So now the Aggies with yet another runner in scoring position. Good job by Cash, though, to get the unassisted play at first. So that will bring up Austin Boast. He will step up to the plate to face Tabor Fast. Swing and a miss. Ball down in the dirt. The second time tonight that he swung it up. Breaking ball down from Tabor Fast. He is not picking up the spin on that pitch. It's going to be another check swing. We have Gregson who went to third on the play, so it just now it's a strike call. The, yep. play, um, um, the home plate umpire got the strike called. Yeah, what occurred there, which was that the ball actually hit boast in the foot, but after he made the swing. So he tried to head down to first base, but first base umpire Michael Grant has signaled, no, he swung. And that ball did hit him in the back of his leg, so it's going to go down as a dead ball. Breaks it will return to second base, and now Boast has two strikes on him. Yeah, that's a tough break for Boast because he he was way out in front of that. Yeah, he was. I mean, you don't often see that. A hitter swings and gets struck with the pitch. That almost got him. So Boast again. Count now goes to one and two to Austin Boast, the DH for tonight. And the only way both sees a fastball in the sequence is if it's something out of the zone. He's going to keep pounding with that breaking ball. Oh, that did him all the way. He hit him once, but he swung. That time he hit him, so he would go down to first base. And to see what Fast was trying to do, he was trying to wrap that breaking ball to his back foot. Just pulled it a little bit too much. That actually hits him in the knee. Oh, maybe a shin burner. That one had a little more velocity than the last one. Another breaking ball, but uh, Bose takes it and heads the first. So Ryan Targotch at the plate with a swing and a miss. He challenged him and got away with that one. And a ball above his hands. And, and Targotch turned around and said, I know that was out of his own, wasn't it? And Antique said, yep. Targotch has Gregson at second. Bose at first. And it's a ball one on the outside. Peter Fast has been sitting 89-90 with that fastball. It's that breaking pitch, it's been his out pitch tonight. Tried to challenge him up and away again. Targosh is not having that one. A good discipline after that first swing. Fast on the 2-1 delivery. And it's low. So he pushes the count out to three and one. I don't think Tabor Fast is going to give in here to Targosh. Three one offering is hit on the ground. It goes to short. The pitch to second for the first play. And that is takes us out of the inning. So a great job by Tabor Flash working out of a jam. We'll be back in just a minute. Watch me. Watch me roll, grind, and spin. Playgrounds for wheels. That's always a win. One with my chair, but never held back. I do things sitting down. Most people standing can't hack. Some might say my condition was fate. My doctors would tell you I'm just redefining great. Watch me. Life-changing orthopedic excellence at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Watch me roll, grind, and spin. Playgrounds for wheels. That's always a win. One with my chair, but never held back. I do things sitting down. Most people standing can't hack. Some might say my condition was fate. My doctors would tell you I'm just redefining great. Watch me. Life-changing orthopedic excellence at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere.
We are ready for the bottom of the third here at Minute Maid Park. Chris Cortez still on the mound for Texas A&M. Of course, he made the SEC All-Freshman team over in 2022. Went 6-3 and three that year with a 4.91 ERA. And you've heard Pat talk about his fastball. He can bring it. That's a Major League fastball, no doubt. First pitch to Nolan Hester to get us underway in the bottom of the third. 39 pitches in, only 17 strikes, so... One of those ratios you like to be at least 50 50 on, if not 60 40. The strike to Hester there to even the count at one and one. Well, that's a beautiful pitch on the outside corner, right on the black. That was nice by Coach Cortez. Nicely done. 97 miles per hour on that fastball. A lot of this is how the pitcher will try to set you up. You know, they'll hit a couple on the outside corner there and get you leaning and come in hard on the inside. This one is hit on the ground. It bounces to short. And the throw to first is in time. Hunter hops to Jack Moss for the out. Yeah, especially right, Butch, especially with a fastball that's uh, 97 plus. The hitters have to really kind of cut the plate in half. You can't cover the entire plate with a guy throwing that hard. So exactly right he'll move that fastball around he can spot it up and occasionally throw that inside fastball to keep these hitters straightened up what to make them off the wall night first pitch to Gabe Harrelson is a strike call ball tip off the bat and Harrelson trying to put a butt to play just put a little pressure on this Aggie defense This one slaps hard and a great stop at second base by Ryan Tarkot. Man, this is second big stop in the game as he goes to first base for the out. <laughs> he is throwing some leather. That is a major league player out there. That ball was scorched off the bat of Gage Harrelson. What a stop by Targosh. Big time play for the Aggie second baseman. <laughs> He's over there shaking his head, smiling, but this guy can play everywhere. You know, we've seen him at first, we've seen him DH. So the pitch to Brazil. I was just about to say, Butch, there hasn't really been a hard hit ball off the bats of these Red Raiders, but that ball was scorched. Just a tad downstairs. Kevin Brazil. 0 for 1 after his fielder's choice in the first. Now the 1 1 delivery from Cortez. Boy, that just missed on the outside. What I like from Cortez at the moment is he's being really smooth as mechanic. He's not jumping like he was in the first inning. The arm was dragging a bit. That's where he was throwing some high fastballs. This time he's really set it in. And this one has popped up. The outfielder will take charge over there now is Jace Lavalette, and that is the third out of the inning. And the Yankees get out of a jam. The reviews are in, and everyone loves Season Pass from TXU Energy. 50% off your energy charges all winter and summer. What's not to love? I saved $450 last year. Half off for half the year is a real crowd pleaser. Even when the weather's changing, I'm still saving. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. You can say that again. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. I didn't mean literally. TXU Energy. Energy for everything. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. Here at the Astros Foundation, we strive to harness 
the passion of our fans to be a force for good in our community. Through key fundraising efforts like our Community Leaders Program and the Diamond Dreams Gala, we're able to redistribute millions of dollars back to support the community that supports us all season long. Log on to astros.com slash foundation to find out how you can affect positive change in our community. Top of the fourth now coming up for the Aggies at the plate. Trevor Warner, Jace Lavalette, and Stanley Tucker will be your first three batters as you see a young Aggie fan there taking in the action. <laughs> Those blue eyes, man, he is enjoying the action here at Minute Maid Park. What a night for baseball. He's like, where are the home runs? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a great pitching matchup That's so far. Right. He came for the long ball. Hadn't seen one yet. So the first pitch to Warner. You know, I'm talking to Coach Schlossnagel. You know, he said this is the most want-to team he's ever coached. He said these guys really want it, and they, uh, they aim to please. He said feels like maybe some of the stumbles out of the gate here. Go back to players really over trying, just trying too hard at times. And so far on offense, the Yankees have had runners in scoring position four times have not produced a run. You wonder if that want-to is getting in the way. Count is 3 0 now to Werner. So Tabor Fast, who's thrown a lot of balls in this ball game, is in a big hole here, 3 0. And they can ball four. So Werner starts it off with a base on balls. Well, here comes a chance from the Aggie faithful. The uh, chant that they have become known for across the country when it comes to <laughs> opposing pitchers that uh, can't find the strike zone. So Chase Lavalette stepping up to the plate now for Texas AM. Starts him off with a strike. Werner at first for Lavalette, and it's a foul ball. Check swing, foul ball. And fastball came up hard and in on Lavalette, could not hold the bat back. And check swing, foul ball. That was a count 0 and 2. Yep, that was a excuse me swing. <laughs> so Jace, and the throw goes to first base. Werner always a threat to run for the Aggies. Yeah, he's just the complete ball player, and he does it all. Gets a big lead over at first. This one has popped up into the air. Goes in this left field, and the left fielder puts it away right there for the Red Raiders. That is Hester coming out to make the catch. And a good read off the bat by Nolan Hester. Will not hit well. But charge it in and quickly to make that catch. What do you think about the job Tabor Fast is doing so far? Because he gets behind in these counts, but he works his way back out of the chain. Yeah, it's really been pretty amazing, Butch. I mean, you think three first pitch strikes out of 15 hitters he's faced. Both pitchers have struggled in that department, but uh, Fast has really come back from being down in counts. Made some quality pitches, and what I see so far, there's no panic in this kid. He's He's got a lot of poise and composure. It's behind in a, in a count. Doesn't bother him. Just comes right back and keeps competing. Stanley Tucker at the plate now with a swing and a miss on a ball that's low and in the dirt. And a good changeup from fast. What's been most impressive is the lack of fastball command. He's been able to locate the breaking pitch and the changeup for strikes to him. Doing a great job of keeping that runner close at first base. That is Trevor Warner over there. Tucker getting the start tonight. This time he smashes one hard, but it goes down the left field. That'll make it an 0-2 count. Fast has missed on pitches. It typically has not been over the heart of the plate. It's been down in the strike zone. 
Yeah, that's what you want. You make mistakes. It's that ball's hanging up in the zone. Whoa, beautiful pitch from Table Fast. And Stanley Tucker will take a seat. That's a call. Third strike. Yeah, fastball that catches the outside corner. Good frame job by Hudson White. Just holds it still right there where he caught it. Mark takes singles. Strike three. Second strikeout so far for Tabor Fast in the ball game. So that'll bring up Caden Kent. And he starts him out with the ball. You know, oftentimes, Butch, when you have a pitcher like Fast who has really good off-speed stuff, able to command it, that fastball that coming into a 90 feels like it's 94 to these hitters. So to throw with the first again before he comes back to face Caden Kent. And as you mentioned before, Pat, his dad, Jeff Kent, played some great ball for the Astros when he was here. That's a beautiful pitch on the outside. Make it one and one with the strike call. Kent didn't agree, but Fast gets the call to even count. Go back to first. So Kent has a man on and two outs. Pass back to first again. And it's a swing and a miss. And a stolen base for Warner. He got a great jump that time. He went first base. Yeah, I thought it might have been a foul ball, but they put some white. The tech catcher reacted to it. That was a great jump, Butch. He was off and running. Just a guest on the move by fast, not coming to first base, and makes him the second base easily. So the count to Kent, one and two. And that one is down. So we have a 2 2 count to Caden Kent. Well, the fifth Aggie runner in scoring position. Can't look at that two out knock. Trying to steal third. He's in there. A great job by Warner. And you talked earlier about his ability to run the bases. Yeah, smart base runner. Well, took a risk there. Not making the third out at third base, but fast with a high late kick. He's about 1-4, one, 1-5 one, at the plate. And just not giving his catcher enough time to make that catch and throw. There's the catch by Bazell and a slight tag. And way too late. What a wonder. The 3-2 delivery is rolling away. And Kent is going to walk down to first base with ball four. And a great at bat by Caden Kent. There's a number of breaking balls down and away that Fast was trying to get him to fish for him. Check swing, but held his swing a couple of times to earn the walk. So Gregson will be the next batter to come up for the Aggies. Gregson had to knock back in the third. He could get the Aggies on the board. And they try to keep Kent close. And you were talking about Warner on the base running. There's so much more than just speed that goes into stealing a base. You have to know the pitcher's move. You know, you have to kind of get a big enough lead. There's a lot of things going into that. Yeah, that's really the read. That's what you're trying to do. Time the pitcher up. And that's what Warner did. This one is fouled off by Gregson. Had a base hit to left his last time up. That ball under the upper deck. To find that one on the day. <laughs> and fast is a tremendous job for the Red Raiders pitching out of trouble. He's got runners on first and third. The second. And he's out. Took a while for a second base up by Eric Doche to make the call, but it was a good tag on the play. Yeah, how about that? What a great catch and throw by Hudson White. The second baseman Austin Green. There's the catch of the tag on Kent. And the Aggies yet again leave runners in scoring position without getting them across. Being the new face of Don't Mess with Texas comes with a lot of responsibility. Thanks. I'll never let her, Joe. 
Don't mess with Texas means don't litter. I love when they come down to the wire and we finish them out. I feel like not only is the team uh, together and, and, and united, but also just the whole building. I feel like I live for that moment. I like big crowds, you know, I play in the SEC where every game was kind of kind of um, juiced up a little bit. So at this level, every game is definitely going to be juiced up. Oh, throwing two and then flying through the lane with Jabari Smith Jr. I'm going to say, yeah, once that ball goes to the net and everyone gets loud, it's like a, a big adrenaline rush. I can't even describe it. You can get chills if you feel it. All that emotion uh, kind of comes to you. You kind of feel everyone's emotion plus yours. And uh, there's nothing like that. You know, like you could just feel the energy, especially when we get wins that we're not supposed to or what they say we aren't supposed to. Just the energy in the building is just, it's, it's electric. It's electric. Ooh. Oh, I like that. I mean, that is beautiful basketball. Now, this music has me feeling inspired. Wow, I'm feeling like anything is possible after that. No score as we head to the bottom of the fourth between the Aggies and the Red Raiders. And you can see the 2022 world champion Houston Astros in action all year long and become an Astros season ticket holder. Catch all the action and enjoy exclusive benefits by visiting Astros.com slash season tickets today. So leading off for the Red Raiders. Ty Coleman at the plate, the DH. Excuse me, that is Austin Green. Leading the inning off for the Red Raiders. Ball is low. Yeah, it's just down. Delivery to Green is high. Green came into this one batting 395. Grounded out in the first. So the 3 1 delivery is a strike call. Beautiful pitch that time from Cortez. Look at this guy. The more I watch him, you gotta like this guy. He just stands up there and he just no matter how many pitches he throws, no matter what kind of jam he is, he seems like he's always got the right pitch to go to. Well, he's been pitching better of late behind the count and the full count here on Green. A great job by Gregson to frame that pitch up. That was, hey, that pit, that. Green slaps it in the right field for a base hit. So a great job by Austin Green all over that one. I think he just right on that one. Well, that was a face of Cortez. I'm going to give in with the fastball. That's about a center cut fastball as you can get. Watch the reaction by Targosh, the second baseman. He thought he had it. Oh, went right by his ear. Completely whiffed on it. Yeah, he kind of stood there in shock. It looks like, hey, that ball got to me quick. That was hit hard, and you don't expect it to get to you that fast. I'd like to see the exit velocity on that ball come off his bat. So the pitch to Coleman there for a strike to start off his at bat. Excuse me, a ball. Looked pretty good. A strike. That's right the first time. And the ground ball goes to short. It goes one play only, and he'll go to first to get the out. So makes a great play in the shortstop there. That is Hunter Haas on the slow ground ball, and he goes to third first to get the out. Well, a great decision by Haas. It would have been a really tough play at second base if he tried to turn his body and look at the second base in Cardosh. Nice easy out to first. Let's put a Red Raider in scoring position. That will bring up Gavin Cash. Delivery to him, get on the ground, and gets away from Cortez, and everybody's going to be safe. So Gavin Cash made good contact there. Cortez could not come up with it, and it's going to be a base hit. Yeah, good job of Cortez getting the glove on it. 
He got, took a funky hop right as it got to the mound. And just couldn't quite field it cleanly. Would have been an easy out at first base, but it looked like he also had Austin Green hung up between second and third, so he might have been able to retire the lead runner, but instead the Red Raiders now with runners on the corners. First and third as Hudson White steps up to the plate. Ball is outside, and a good block there by the Yankees catcher on the play, Gregson. Oh, Hudson White has been so good for the Red Raiders behind the dish tonight. Already thrown out two Aggie runners. Yeah, his defense has been stellar tonight. Now he has a chance to pick up an RBI. Ball on the outside, make it 2-0. Play deep up the middle. Looking for that double play ball. Cortez, 2-0. That's going to be a strike. And Hudson White was guessing fastball. Instead, gets to the third slide in the row from the arm of Cortez. Pretty nasty one. Let's start out in the zone and just drift it outside. So Cortez ready to deal on 2-1. and one. Jammed him inside to go down to the first place umpire. And he said, yes, he did swing. That was Michael Durantes at first with that call. Emphatically. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, definitely was a swing. That bat came all the way around. No doubt about it. So he evens the count at two and two. And a swing and a miss, and he gets the strikeout. Cortez coming back strong to finish off White. Yeah. Yeah. Huge K for Chris Cortez. And just a nasty slider. You gotta be ready for that 95 plus fastball instead. He hit that slider just so hard to adjust to that pitch, especially where the placement was. So Dylan Carter is up now. He walked his first time and he starts him off with a strike. They're going to change up their first and third defense. Maybe Gregson out to give signs to his infield. Big at bat for the Red Raiders here in the fourth. Ball's outside. Yeah, it's been so amazing, Coach. It's both pitchers really buckling down when they've had to make great pitches, and both of them have executed well. Cortez with the one and one offering, and it's a swing and a miss. Well, Carter had a good swing at it. Yeah, good good top. job keeping those guys off balance. Yeah, good time yeah. to the play. And he takes his pitch as well. So the one two offering is high. They make it two and two. And you can see Austin Green. Just a blur down that third baseline, trying to distract the pitcher. So now Cortez gathers himself. 2-2 two -two count. Just missed. Very close on the outside. And just before that pitch was delivered, Austin Green busted down the third baseline, trying to distract Cortez. And Cortez just missed the outside corner. And not going to give... Gavin Cash, a head start at first base. So Carter has pushed it all the way forward. And a strike three called. What a job by Chris Cortez. Working out of another jam, and he finishes off with a huge strikeout. And a 69th pitch of the night for Cortez. Who gets the Yankees out of a jam. This game will remain tied. 0-0 going to the fifth inning. Watch me. Watch me paddle, carve, and drop in. The water is my canvas. Let the good times begin. Perfect sets and barrels I chase. Where sand becomes surf, waves set the pace. Childhood accident couldn't ruin my vibes. Thanks to one special place, I'd never been more alive. Watch me. Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. 
2022 World Series champion. It's one thing to reach the pinnacle and another to hold the throne. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, but we're used to the weight. We've built a legacy. Now, let's cement the dynasty. We're ready. Six remarkable kids have teamed up with a participating university for the Shriners Children's College Classic Team Fundraising Challenge. All weekend long, teams will compete to see which fan can raise the most money in support of Shriners Children's. Go online to collegeclassic.org to donate in honor of your favorite team and do it today. Such a great organization, such a good cause. And this weekend, it's just been phenomenal to watch. The great baseball we've had and the fans have come out. It's been really nice to watch as Gregson steps up. Ball two now to Gregson. J.D. Gregson was at the plate when the runner was thrown out at second to end the last inning, so he comes back up. And fast delivers again. Yeah, such a great challenge as well, Butch, with the fans really challenging each other about who can raise, which fan base can raise more money. And last time I looked, it was uh, Louisville who became the tournament champion today. Their fan base has donated the most money so far, so these other fans uh, need to get with it here. Gregson with the fall ball. Three and one on the count. Gets set to deliver. Let's check that in just a second. Gregson at the plate. Well, scoreboard had it right. Yeah, we were talking here in the booth because the scoreboard had three and one, and it looked like it was two and one, but actually it was three and one. So that's a base on ball right there for Gregson. And the fourth walk given up tonight by Tabor Fast, but as we just talked about last inning. His ability to work out of jams has been nothing short of phenomenal. Oh, he's, he's been a magician <laughs> in this game. He really has. That's Tim Tadlock out of the dugout. This may be it for fast. That was his 73rd pitch. That's a lot as we go we're in the top of the fifth right now. But he's done an amazing job just battling, just really out there has. battling. Yeah, you can tell the command wasn't quite as sharp tonight for him, but Sure did good. Well, we'll have a reliever coming in for Texas Tech. We'll tell you more about Brandon Beckel when we return. When you're looking for a new SUV, don't settle for some tired old design. For the freshest SUVs on the road, it has to be Honda. Honda SUVs are bolder and more beautiful than ever, including Ridgeline, Passport, HRV, the all-new CRV, and the totally redesigned Honda Pilot, the biggest, most powerful Honda SUV ever, with more room inside so you can do more outside. So for the freshest SUVs on the road, see your greater Houston Honda dealer today. As the H-E-B Bowmaster, I always get excited for the season because it's the most wonderful time of year for crawfish. And at H-E-B, we sell more crawfish in Texas than anyone. We're talking big, fresh, live Louisiana crawfish. Plus, with our in-store boils, we do the prepping, spicing, and cooking. So you can just pinch, pull, and be merry. H-E-B. Here, crawfish season is better. Promise is a trust not to be broken. I say your name. Whether spoken with an oath. Do you solemnly swear. It's your first day. You know I got your back, right? Or seal with a pinky. In 1922, a group of soldiers launched USAA with a promise to take care of their own. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission. Always. We have a new 
pitcher in the ball game for the Red Raiders. He's number 44, Brandon Beckel. He's a left-hander. So the Aggies are going to see a lot of left-handers in this one as Tabor Fast, also a left-hander, checks out. Beckel 1-0 on the season with nine strikeouts and only two bases on balls. Yeah, good to strike out to walk ratio. And Beckel, the 6'4", uh, 225-pound junior right-hander from San Antonio, a reliable arm out of that Texas Tech bullpen. Made 18 appearances last season. One of those uh, swing men that Tim Tadlock can count on to pitch middle innings, close games, pitch late, but uh, here called upon in a tied-up ball game here in the fifth inning. Beckel gets the call and will sit low 90s with the fastball. Slider and a changeup. He has been outstanding so far for Tadlock's Red Raiders. And he will face the top of the Texas A&M lineup with Gregson at first after the base on balls to him. So that'll mean Hunter Haas and Jack Moss will be the next two guys up. And a good time to turn to your bullpen. Taper Fast had, as we talked about, Butch Pitcher effectively in some tough situations, but you get a lot of those high stress pitches, and you know, 73 sometimes can feel like 90. And, and you, as a pitcher, you understand that you're not going to have your best stuff every night out. You have to make it work either way. That's right. And a fast battle through some uh, command issues tonight. And we look at the uh, fact that the lineup has been turned over for the third time with Haas coming up again here in the fifth. It's a beautiful pitch to start him off with a strike call right there. Haas 0 for 2 tonight. He has a pop up and a foul out. Gazelle back behind third base about five steps, not expecting a butt from Haas. This one is hit hard and is into the gap in right center field. Great job being cut off by the center fielder for Texas Tech. Dylan Carter did a super job because then when he hit that, it appeared the ball may roll all the way to the wall. Yeah, that ball was headed for a double. Then. Great job by Dylan Carter. Took a perfect angle to cut that ball off. Nice slotting stop. And holds Haas to a single. But that Haas single would extend breaks into third base. First and third. No outs here for the Aggies. See if they can bust through uh, with all these runners they've had in scoring position. They need to push one across here. Well, that'll bring up Jack Moss for Texas A&M. And we'll see if Becker has some of that Tabor fast magic. With runners on first and third. Pitch a strike called on the outside corner. Nice fastball by Beckel. 94. Paint the black. Beckel takes a good long look. That's a beautiful speed pitch in there. Yeah, good wow. side. Yeah, right off that fastball. Started off on the outside, broke it to the middle. That throws Moss. So Beckel ahead in the count now. Oh, and two. And a swing and a miss. That's just a great job of pitching uh, there. Huge strikeout. Put that slider down in his back foot on the back foot of Moss. Moss unable to make contact. That's a huge strikeout. Now the Red Raiders can still play a double play depth. And have a chance to turn it with Boast. But one of the hotter hitters for the Aggies coming up. He definitely is. Austin Boast is the DH tonight. Came into this game hitting 222. Facing Beckel here. Pitch is high to start off that bat. Runners on first and third. Nothing new for the Aggies in this game. As Bolt tries to come up with the RBI. That's a 2-0 count now to Austin Bost. Uh, Bost has four hits in the tournament. Three of them have gone for extra bases. A couple of doubles and a home run. He 
Virginia is starting to heat up for the Aggies. Brandon Beckel delivered. Hit on the ground. By the shortstop. It's a base hit. And it's a 1-0 game. The Aggies go out in front. Great job by Austin Bost hitting that ball through the left side. Yeah, the old saying, you can't keep a good man down long. And that certainly has been the case for Austin Bost. Came into this tournament batting under 200 on the season. He now has his fifth hit of the tournament. He'll make that his fourth RBI in three games. And that was a crucial hit for the Aggies as they break out on tap. one nothing in this game. So Ryan Targotch, who actually scorched one this last time up. Strike call. He's 0 for 2 today. The play at second. And the runner is back in safely. That's Hunter Haas at second base. So Beckham trying to keep Haas close at second. Works in strike, a swing and a miss. Nice slider for Beckham. Beckel looking to limit the damage here for the Red Raiders. One run across, but going to get Targosh enticed into that double play ball. He's ahead in the count, 0-2, as Beckel delivers. Swing and a miss, and he got in. And a couple of nice sliders there for Beckel, and reports his second strike out of the inning. Same type of pitch. Break the ball down and in to the left hand. Yeah, he's not out of the woods yet, but boy, has he done a good job to try to, as you said, limit some of the damage here in the fifth. Trevor Warner now up to the plate for the Aggies. The throw down the third, and it's going to be a stolen base by Haas. A double steal by the Aggies, and they pulled it off. Yeah, another great throw by Hudson White. And Immediately, Kevin Bazell, the third baseman, for Texas Tech, said, hey, we ought to review this. He thinks he got it. I don't think so. I think that hand was underneath. Yeah, great slide by Hunter Haas. Great slide by Haas, and it looks like a really good call by Clint Fagan, the third base umpire. And you see Bazell trying to block the bag there with that left foot, and Haas gets around it. Watch that left hand. I think it just comes in and tucks under the tag of Bazell. There's the hand on the bag, and there's the tag. I think you said, yeah. Nice play. Close play, but he did beat it in there. Well, the Aggies have been super aggressive on the base pass. They boys. have. They've already had two guys thrown out by Hudson White. They've got uh, two outs in the inning. Can't make that third out of third base. That was a high-risk play by, by, ha <laughs> by Haas. It should be a pretty quick replay. Yeah, the headsets are coming off, and we will see what the call is. That's going to cost him. And he is safe. Yeah. Yes. Well, it cost the Red Raiders a challenge. They've got one left. Heads up base running by Austin Boast to recognize Austin stealing third. He took second on that play. Yeah, and he was right behind him. I mean, he. I was watching Haas, and he took out, and right around the time he took out, here comes Boast. Yeah, that's just heads up base running, because that was on his own. Haas stealing third. So Warner at the plate now, takes a strike. Aggies with runners on third and on the second and third. The pitch to Warner is a swing and a miss. Oh, blew that 93 right by him. the guy the Aggies want at the plate. 
Yeah, Beckel has given up a couple of hits, but man, this guy has some great stuff. Now he's got the one-two pitch coming. Nice. Strike three called. What a job by Brandon Beckel. He strands two runners, but the Aggies score for the first time tonight. They lead it one nothing. I depend on my car, so I take care of it with parts from rockauto.com. Everything I need to know is at Rock Auto. My car isn't rare, but when I fix it myself, it's special. All the parts your car will ever need, Rock Auto. Today we're here at Texas A&M welcoming Addison, one of our Shriners patients. And Addison had a fabulous time meeting all the Texas A&M players. When I was 10 years old, I was in the back of my grandpa's truck with a rifle on the layout behind the seat. He had a bump. The bullet went through the leg. Went to the hospital to try to save it, but they couldn't. So they decided to amputate it. We get a phone call. It's from uh, a Shriner from Eagle Pass. And he heard about our story, and he wanted us to help. They provided everything for us, food, lodging, everything. First week I went to Shriners, I went in wheelchair and I came back walking out. It was great to meet Addison, just getting to watch him take BP on the field was, was super awesome. Personally, I've been a part of something where you have something traumatic happen to your family and that kind of foundation that the Shriners gives the family, you literally can't put a price tag on what Shriners does. Shriners will provide the care regardless of the family's ability to pay. This is my fifth prosthesis. I've gone at least 20 times. Kel fully expressed that I do not know where we would have been without Shriner's support and help. Bottom of the fifth now, one nothing, Texas A&M. They have five hits so far in the ball game. And they've had runners on base every inning. Yeah. They have. The problem for the Aggies is they uh, have stranded about six of those in scoring position. So it could be a bigger lead, but uh, unable to come through with a big hit. So Will Burns steps up and takes a ball. Low and inside. This time it's a foul ball on the right side. Well, oh, Butch, what a job Tim Tadlock has done in his tenure at Texas Tech. His 11th season. He has taken Tech to a number of College World Series appearances. He was a 2014-18 National Coach of the Year. Swing and a miss by Burns. How about this? You don't hear this often in college baseball. He has a lifetime contract as the head coach for the Red Raiders. You don't get a lifetime contract <laughs> in anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> This one is fouled off down the left side. I mean, we're all day-to-day, -day, basically. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so. He has done a tremendous job. He had a great uh, crew over with him. J. Bob Thomas, just a tremendous recruiter. He knows the catchers and hitters. Matt Gardner, his pitching coach in his 10th season. Eric Gutierrez. I was calling Gutierrez the games when he played in the Red Wings. Outside making well, too. Yeah, four College World Series appearances. Five seasons of 45 wins or more? Yeah. I mean, that, that is outstanding. Doing it in, uh, in Lubbock. So Will Burns with a swing and a miss. And Cortez with a strikeout of Will Burns. Yeah, this overpowering fastball by Cortez has done that twice to Burns. Just not able to catch up to it. And there's some heat on the outside corner. So that'll bring up number 41, Nolan Hester. And you look at this Texas Tech team this year with 13 freshmen and seven transfers. Uh, yeah, a lot of folks in Lubbock are thinking, man, this, this might be a new building here for, for Tim. And, you know, those, he just reloads, man. He's got That's a ton of talent. You know, there may be some young faces and some fresh faces in those Red Raider uniforms this year, but they have got a ton of talent. I expect those guys to make the whole season run again. Strike two to Hester. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about it. He, he's turned the Red Raiders into a national powerhouse. Yep. You know, he's, he's done a phenomenal job. So Hester now down in the count, 0-2. Oh, and two. Oh, this one is hit foul. Into the seats on the left side. 
Well, Chris Cortez's 76th pitch of the night came in at 97 on the gun. He has not lost an ounce on that fastball. So the 0-2 offering again is a ball on the outside. Turning the backboard and slider just missed. Well, he has really settled into this game. He has. Uh, Hester, 0 for 2 at the plate. The 1 2 count. Yeah. Is lined and a base hit in the right field. So Hester, down in the count, delivers a big hit to right for the Red Raiders. Yeah, that's big time two strike hitting right there. Nice short stroke by Nolan Hester. Just goes down and gets a pretty good pitch. Go the back door and get with the slider to Cortez. And Hester scores it. Nice job. And then he strikes. Just a good piece of hitting right there. So that will bring up Gabe Harrelson again. He walked in the first. Harrelson is the right fielder for the Red Raiders. And he could not come up with that and a swing and a miss. What do you think about the new pitch call? Yeah, it's, it's really grown on me. I'll tell you, Butch, when I first when I first talked about it, I thought, man, what are they doing to baseball? Another rule change? But it's really grown. I, I tell you why. It, it, it's really kept the pace of games going much better. And I think for the fans, it's a real win. Because these games now are being cut down 25 to 30 minutes in length. And uh, I just like the pace of it. Much more action going on. Yes, the games are a lot faster. You know, I was at spring training this week, and I watched two Astros games. One was two hours and 33 minutes. The other one was two hours and 11 minutes. Wow. So they were flying. That is flying. They were flying. And I do think there you know, there have been some unintended consequences. One is, you know, punching hitters out in critical situations, runners on base. Fans don't come to see that. Now, I think you could solve that. Give, give coaches a, a maybe two or three passes a game where if, if a hitter does get run up on the clock, or a pitcher, you know, same scenario. Pitcher gets run up for a ball yeah. in a critical situation, and coach can use one of those passes. I think that'll help. Because you certainly don't want to take away from the effect of the game, but, you know, having a hitter taken out of a critical situation. That was strike two to Harrelson. The one-two delivery is just outside. Make it ball two. Yeah, I saw uh, Jeremy Pena get run up on just what you're talking about. He took too long to get in the box. The umpire called the strike on him. It was strike three because he had a 2-2 two -two count at yeah. the time. So. I think there are runners on base, right? It yeah. A big time situation. And, yeah, those are the things you have to avoid. And that's not what uh, the rule was intended to do is you know, change the game in that. Base runner breaks on the play. Ball is to short and have one play. That is to first base and Harrison is out. So a good job by the Red Raiders to start the runner and avoid the double play. Yeah, great decision there by Tadlock to put Hester in motion. And you're exactly right, Bush. That avoids the double play on Dave Harrelson's ground ball. So nicely again by Hunter Haas. Boy, he is just smooth. Yeah, well, he doesn't miss anything. Huh? Yeah, that was a tough hop right there. He had to come get it, take it on the quick hop. Well done. So Hester moves to second. And Kevin Bazell will be at the plate in a swing and a miss from Kevin. Well, the Red Raiders have the chance to tie this game if Bazell can come up with a big two out RBI knock. Yeah, he's 0 for 2 today. So the way he's been hitting the ball, you would think he's due with that situation. So Cortez delivers on the outside corner and it's fouled off by Bazell. Brazil three hits coming into the night in the tournament. Cortez has held him hitless so far. Cortez ready to go quickly with the 0 and 2 count. Ground ball hit back up the middle again. Her house to first base, and that will do it. And once again, Cortez gets the job done on the hill for the Aggies. They lead it 1 0. We'll come back the bottom of the frame in just a minute.
I started this journey in, in sports 15 years ago or so, uh, you know, thinking back on the women that I looked up to and, and how many were out there, it's, it, it has come so far, right? I, I, don't, I don't feel alone when I walk into a ballpark because there are other women. They're everywhere. They're not just on the field. Uh, they're not just covering the game. They're in the front office now. Uh, they're on the marketing side. You, you name it, they're everywhere. And I think that's just going to continue to progress, especially in baseball, the, the waves that are being made by some of our own at AT&T Sportsnet by calling games, or of course the general manager being a woman out there in Miami. I just, I, I'm excited to see where it all goes. And, and who gets what job next. It's about not making headlines anymore. It's about it not being a big story every time a woman does something for the very first time. Because I don't want to be the story, right? I just want to do my job. I just want to work in sports like everyone else does. For children fighting critical illness, we can make the stars align. Because when we come together, hope and joy will shine. Help us make every wish come true. We're back for the top of the sixth at Minute Maid Park. And guess what? Minute Maid Park, the home of the Houston Astros. Gear up for the 2023 season at the Astros Team Store. Shop the latest hats, shirts, jerseys, and commemorative items, including World Champions gear today. Visit astros.com slash team store for the hours and all the information you will need. You might even be able to get that jacket. That's there a great is. jacket. Kate Upton made that very popular again. <laughs> Actually, it was Nolan Ryan who first made it real That's really right. popular back then. A classic candy stripes for the Astros, and they're back in vogue. So, Jay's Lavalette to lead it off for the Yankees with a swing and a miss from Brandon Beckel. That is still a classic. Oh, it is. I love it. I love those rainbows. You know, I kind of probably have owned more jerseys than I need to own. <laughs> right. Lavalette fouls that one off. Nice catch. The fans are snagging him in. Sign him up. Chase one for two tonight. Had a single back in the second inning. 0 2 delivery. This one has popped up. High. Left fielder. Hester is there, puts it away. That is the first out of the inning. Yeah, eventually we knew that ball would come down, but that was up there for a long time. Major League pop-up. Off the bat, a lob left. <laughs> so Stanley Tucker is going to be a pinch hit for him. We have a pinch hitter coming on for the Aggies. That is Tab Tracy. Tab Tracy started one of the other games in this series for the Aggies. Starts him off with the ball. Tracy, number 47. And that's low and inside. Tracy from Stratford High School right here in Houston. Where our producer, Sam Schrade, went to high school. Nice. Spartans. Fouled off. I bet the tab came by and broke all of Sam's records. <laughs> well, Tracy does have a hit and two at bats. Back on Friday, the Yankees took on Louisville. So the 2 1 delivery is high, make it 3 and 1 to Tracy. Great job by Beckel working out of difficult circumstances last inning and gave up the one run, but really limited the damage. Three strikeouts in the fifth for Beckel. And 
Make it ball four outside on that one. So a good eye by Tab Tracy. That pitch just missed. So that'll bring up Caden Kent, who's in left field tonight. We mentioned, of course, he's an infielder by trade, just like his dad, Jeff Kent. Throw over to first to keep the runner close. And you know, I'm going to try to get my Jeff Kent story in here. Yeah, maybe, you need maybe to. Maybe we'll have a time I while Kent games at the plate. <laughs> you know, sometimes guys get reputations and they're not fair. I mean, they're just they're just not. In the hard nosed uh, Jeff Kent. Yep, talking about the hard nosed <laughs> Jeff Kent, and you know he, he didn't really have a good reputation with the media. But the short of it is, Astros are playing the Cardinals. It's the playoffs. We're in St. Louis, and I'm out doing a live shot outside of Bush, and we ran late. So by the time I got to the dugout, back to the clubhouse, all the players were eating. Everybody was eating, and so we had missed our availability. Pitch is a strike call. And so I'm standing at the door. I mean, I can't believe this, man. We're all the way in St. Louis. <laughs> right. We got nobody to interview. Jeff Kent is sitting by his locker. Jeff Kent would, did not like to do a lot of interviews. He actually looked at me and he said, "Would you like to talk to me?" He was pointing, wow, nice waving me over. Man, I, I love <laughs> Jeff Kent forever. After that, I mean, it's just yeah. saved the day for you. He did. He definitely did. That's great. So the pitch to Caden Kent. Great oh, stop at third, and the throw to first is in time. But what a stop over there by Kevin Bazell. Wow. Now that, look at Roger, that's a catcher playing third base. It just made a backhanded stop. Looked like Butch Robinson over there at third. Man, what a play. Sets his feet, what a strong throw. We know he's got a great arm, but man. That was a big time play. Dude. That was Major League. And he didn't just make the stop. You know, he got a pretty fast runner going down the line. That's a great Jeff Kent story. I never, you know, really knew Jeff that well. Just have heard uh, what a hard-nosed competitor he is. And, of course, a great clubhouse guy because you've got yeah. a guy that plays with that intensity. That brings energy to the clubhouse. Oh, no doubt. And that's what you want, you know. Gregson at the plate now for the Aggies. There is no softness in that guy's game. Pitch on the way is hit into the air. Near the seats on the right side, and it's going to be a foul ball. And that's why I say I, I think sometimes players can get bad reps for, for whatever because Jeff Kent was, you know, he was always a great guy to us. Yeah. And he was always more than accommodating and just, uh, uh, and that night, he actually saved us. So. <laughs> that's a great story. I've heard that uh, Caden brings that level of intensity. And Jim Slossinger says, I love it. Yeah, that's the kind of guy you want. Takes the game serious and certainly wants to win more than anything every night. Give me 25 of those guys. Beckle set for the 0-2 delivery to Gregson. And that's very close. It's a tough ball to take right there on 2 You saw Hudson White set up outside and Beckle hit the spot. He was set up just off the plate. Ron Tig was not going to give him those extra inches. But it's going to be caught. A nice sliding catch out there by Hester. Came in on the dead run and made a nice diving catch, and that takes us out of the top of the six. Watch me. Watch me tumble, jump, and soar. When our squad is on point, we own the floor. Dazzling stunts and dances are my jam. Pain once caused issues, but they had a plan. A life-changing race with no surgery to fear. Activity without limits, one more reason to cheer. Watch me. Industry-leading scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. 
Watch me tumble, jump, and soar. When our squad is on point, we own the floor. Dazzling stunts and dances are my jam. Pain once caused issues, but they had a plan. A life-changing brace with no surgery to fear. Activity without limits, one more reason to cheer. Watch me. Industry-leading scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. What's his deal? Oh, him? He just got cash back shopping with Rackadin. Oh, I know the feeling. Cash back's where it's at. I just never dance in public. Mm -hmm. The 2023 Shriners Children's College Classic is presented by Shriners Children's. Go to collegeclassic.org to donate today. And by Demand Science. Let's make your job easier. Welcome back, everyone, to Minute Maid Park, and what a gorgeous night it is in downtown Houston, Texas. Red Raiders will come to the plate. Here in the bottom of the sixth. And that is a ball to start us off. At the plate is number two. The pitch from Cortez. It's going to be called ball two. Yeah, just down in the zone. You're at that point in the game, you certainly can't afford any free bases. Austin Green, one for two today. Cortez with his 89th pitch of the game. Yeah, his longest outing this year has been 93 pitches. So he's closing in on that. This time it's fouled off by Austin Green. And I think the plan for Cortez is if Jim Schlossangle can get him through the sixth inning. That would probably be it for the night, but like we talked about, his velocity has not dipped at all. He's still sitting 96-97 at that fastball. 2-2 count. Swung on, grounded to first base. And that'll be Jack Moss, unassisted for the out. And the first batter of the inning goes down. A nice job by Cortez to get back into that count and retire Green on the easy ground ball. And Jack Moss at first base. Yeah, Cortez has been impressive so far tonight. I mean, he really has. He came into this with a 5.40 ERA. And we knew he had a good fastball, but what he's showing tonight is that he's also a good pitcher. He knows how to mix it up. Yeah, he really has. Did a great job of mixing pitches. Worked himself out of a couple of jams and really has settled down into this game. Ty Coleman at the plate now, the designated hitter for the Red Raiders. First couple of innings were a little bit stressful for him and then had a clean third. Had a couple of singles in the fourth, single in the fifth, but... You're right, Butch. He's just really settled down and extended this game here for the Aggies. Get into the sixth inning for him. Coleman 0 for 2 in the game tonight. That's way outside. Cortez, and that one gets away outside. Good job holding up there. Coleman almost committed, but he did a good job of keeping that bat back, and now it's a three-and-one count. Three-one offer is a swing and a miss. And just blew the fastball by him. 97 still. So Cortez working a little faster now. 
This was going to be fouled up. So the count will stay full. Gavin Cash on base. On deck, excuse me. Boy, a long look at that watch. Get that pitch in on the pitch com watch. Full count, and it's high. So the walk goes to Coleman, Ty Coleman. And get it back to Coleman. Red Raiders need base runners, and they'll take them away. They can get them against Cortez. That might be it. Yep, Slash will go to the pin. Right out of the dugout. Well, you called it, and I, I've got to think Coach is very happy with what he got tonight. Oh, when man. you look at the amount of pitches he threw. Yeah, super pleased. This is a red regular lineup that could do some damage. And Cortez pitched himself out of the trouble a couple of times and just had a great night. Holman will still be his base runner. I'll tell you more about the reliever for the Aggies when we come back in just a moment. This is Ford Truck Month, Texas. Time to get up and get into Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight, including Ford F-150 and the all-new Ford Super Duty. Or check out Ford Maverick and Ford Ranger. So get into Ford Truck Month, Texas, and see what a built Ford Tough truck can do for you. There's a great selection in stock. Drive a new Ford F-150 today with 0%, 0 down, and 0 payments for 90 days, plus complimentary maintenance. See your best-in-Texas Ford dealer. What's his deal? Oh, him? He just got cash back shopping with Rackett in. Oh, I know the feeling. Cash back's where it's at. I just never dance in public. Mm -hmm. Find out where that road leads. Take on any challenge. When you have the number one brand in dependability, you stop thinking about what you can't do and start doing what you never thought possible. Kia, movement that inspires. And the new pitcher comes on for the Aggies here in the bottom of the six. It's Shane Shadeo. The left-hander comes on. He's number 38. Let's close the book, though, on Cortez. Five and a third innings, his longest stint of the season so far, and he struck out four while he was out there. Yeah, outstanding outing for Cortez, and he'll give way to Shane Sadeo. And Sadeo, freshman with the high potential. Jim Schlossnagel not afraid to go to this. The tour poised freshman, 6'2", 170 out of Montgomery, Texas, making his fourth appearance. He has gone four and two thirds innings, given up three hits, a couple of runs, six strikeouts, one walk. 3.86 earned run average. So, how about this high leverage situation for a freshman? Yeah, you can grow up in a hurry in this kind of situation. <laughs> you come in against a good hitting team. First batter he will face will be Gavin Cash, the UT transfer. Another one of those young men who's hit the ball extremely well in this tournament. Sadeo will sit low 90s with the fastball. Pretty good breaking pitch. That's what Schlossdagel likes. He likes the matchup against Gavin Cash. So lefty on lefty, and he starts him off with a strike. Sadeo with a beautiful pitch in there. Yep, 91 on that fastball. Coleman at first for the Red Raiders. That's a ball on the outside. Sadeo delivers, and it's outside. There's the slider that's wide. Good job by Gregson to get over it. Get to it. So Cash works it out to a two-and-one count. Works it out into his favor early. 
And so Dano comes back with a strike right down the pipe. Yeah, just paints it outside corner to kneecaps. Man, good take by Cash. Not much you can do with that pitch. So the 2-2 delivery is on the ground and in the left field for a base hit. So Coleman will stop at second base, but some good hitting there by Cash as he slaps it the opposite way. Yeah, tremendous two-strike hitting. And you got to think Cash was saying, he, he's going to run back out to the outside corner, and he does. Not a bad pitch at all. Fastball down and away, and Cash just slaps it through that hole between third and short. Nice job of shortening up that swing and just punched it where the ball was delivered. So Hudson White will now come on to face the Deo. Texas Tech making some noise. Two runners on. This one is hit high to deep center field. And it takes Tracy back to the warning track, but he makes the catch, and both runners will tag on the play. Wow. That ball was pounded off the bat of Hudson White. Well, that would have been a home run in a lot of the parks Man. that he plays in. No doubt. I don't know how that ball stayed in. The wind's blowing slightly out to left. But he jumped all over, just missed it. And both runners advance. Head, heads up base running by Coleman and Cash to tag up from first base. So now the Red Raiders have a chance to go ahead. Dylan Carter can deliver. Runners on second and third in scoring position, and they want to have a little conference at the mound. Two outs. So this is, this is a really a big opportunity here for the Red Raiders. Yeah, this is a strategy session here by Nate Yeske. How do they want to pitch to Dylan Carter? There's Carter with good wheels at the plate. Maybe say that left hit a box quick. That's how do the Aggies want to approach him? And our home plate umpire, Ron T, heads out to the mound. He was very polite. He didn't try to rush him. He just went there. <laughs> just made his presence known. Well, Nate Yeske, one of the better pitching coaches, came over from Arizona. One of Jay Johnson's staff when he was there. I'm sure that had a lot to do with why Cortez decided not to go to Arizona and came to yeah, Texas A&M after coach. that. Yep. Yes. There you go. Part of that 21 College World Series team. And now Cash is uh, being looked at by the training staff for the Red Raiders. You know, he slipped on that pop-up over towards the netting on defense last inning. He got up and looked like he was a little bit gimpy on that left foot. And now Tim Tadlock out to see what the issue is, but uh, Cash may have done something to that ankle or that foot and he slipped over there chasing after that foul ball. Well, they want him to test it out a little bit. Well, I mean, if, if anything, Tadlock wants him to be healthy, but certainly trying to keep him in the game. He looks pretty satisfied. The uh, So you good? Good, let's go. <laughs> I need you in the game, so let's, say, let's go. <laughs> but he did make him show him. He did make him do a little job yeah, there to make sure everything was all good. Texas Tech came into this tournament ranked 24th in the country. You know, they were actually 10 and 0 when they came in, 11 and 1 now. So this team has been playing some great baseball. I sure have. It's Loss on Friday was, was a bit of a surprise to Rice, 3 to 2. Bounced back and beat Michigan 10 to 7 yesterday. And certainly trying to walk out of here with a 2 1 record, but more importantly, 12 1 in the season. But the Aggies are having some say about that at the moment. So the pitch from Sandeo is low. One ball, no strike. To Dylan Carter. Big whiff of that one. Okay, nice breaking ball from Spale. That's the pitch they want to get Carter out with. Let's see how they set the next one up. Carter 0 for 1 with a walk in this game, and he hits this one by the third baseman. It's going to be a base hit to left. 
Cash coming to the plate. Here comes the throw. And he's safe. Great job by Cash. It looked like the ball beat him there, but they could not come up with the tag. Yeah, tremendous throw from Hayden Kent out left field. That ball was on the money. Jamie Gregson could not hold on. And Tim Tadlock taking his chance to go ahead this game. He does just that. Gavin Cash sliding under the tag. But it wouldn't have mattered. Gregson could not hold on. Well, that was really important to make sure Cash was okay at second base because that's why Coach was checking him out. That's exactly right. So we have a tie ball game. Well, if he was gimpy at all, but he wasn't short on that play. Excuse me, two, two runs on the play. Motor. Yes, they got around there in a hurry. Red Raiders go up now. Two to one Red Raiders after that two-run single. How about the swing by Dylan Carter? Going the other way, second time in a row. And a Texas Tech Red Raider has gone opposite field against Sedeo. Well, you said it was a big spot, and he delivered. So Will Burns at the plate now for the Red Raiders. That was a pretty good throw from Ken out of left field. It looked like it might almost beat him there. So the 1-1 one -one count to Will Burns. And it's a foul ball down the left side. I think that play's handled cleanly by Gregson at home plate. Cash is out. Yeah. Hot throw out of the money. Swing and a miss. So Sedeo gets out of the jam, but not before the Red Raiders go out in front on that two run single by Dylan Carter. Texas Tech out in front, two to one. Oh, I need new wipers. Hmm, rockauto.com. That was easy. That was fast. We're here today in Lubbock, Texas at Reed Griffin Park to welcome Caden, who is a former Shriners Children's patient out of Galveston, Texas. And we're giving him the tour of the facility. Where are you from? Well, I'm from Corpus. I'm a sophomore here at Texas Tech. When I was 13 years old, me and my dad were going to build a barbecue pit. Whenever I broke open that valve, that gas was coming out way too fast. Went to go shut it and it blew up right in front of me. They sent me to Galveston because they were the only ones that could handle a pediatric burn of that level. I spent six months both ICU and recovery. Through that time, they, they gave me a second chance in life is what Shriners did. A guy like Caden could pass on the blame to a lot of things about how his life's gone and what happened to him at a young age. And He's taking full responsibility for you know, his day, and he's going to pursue his college degree. He's always a fun guy to be around and a great sense of humor, so it's awesome having him around the team and facility. It doesn't matter the ability of the patient's parents to pay. We're going to take care of that child regardless, and that's what's number one with us. Shriners Children's has not only helped Caden to survive, but also to thrive in his life. Guns up! How about the defense in this one? We have had some outstanding plays from both teams. Well, both teams, but uh, the Red Raiders especially have done a tremendous job throwing base runners out on the base pass. A couple of throwouts for Hudson White by the dish. How about this play by Kevin Bazil at third base? And the diving catch by Nolan Hester out the left. <laughs> These Red Raiders are throwing some leather tonight. Yeah, Hester's been all over the place out there. He's done a great job. And a well-pitched game by both sides as well. This is uh, pretty much what we anticipated, Butch. You called it at the top of the show. Great so intensity. Hunter Haas will lead off the top of the seventh for us. This has the feel of a postseason contest between these two teams and something you may very well see down the road. Yeah, we knew it was going to be this heavyweight slugfest coming into this one. Both teams coming up with big wins yesterday. Haas takes ball one. He's one for three in the game tonight. Is Hunter Haas. Well, two great college baseball coaching staffs. We referenced Tim Tadlock and his staff. And 
certainly the staff that Jim Swashley has put together. And he took the helm of Texas A&M last year. Got uh, taking the Aggies to the World Series. One there for the first time for the Aggies since 1993. Two-time National Coach of the Year. He's put the, the dynasty at TCU before taking the A&M job. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, they won the SEC West. You know, he just got there. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you That's how you make, don't wear out your welcome real quick. You come <laughs> in and make a really good first impression. So the 2-1 offer to Hunter Haas oh, is hot. Way high. Make it three and one. I think we just lost that pitch. Yeah. Schlossnagel, three-time national coach of the year. Very successful at TS TCU. He brings Nate Yeski with him and, and Nolan Kane. I think it was Miller Hughes, second year. He's been part of the staff, but part of uh, Paul Maneri's staff when he was at LSU for eight seasons. Great recruiting coordinator. 3-1 count is low, make it ball four, and Hunter Haas is on base. And that's just what Hunter Haas does. <laughs> yeah, he's been to the World Series five times. Wow. First meeting tonight, though, against Texas Tech since 2017. Yep. So they haven't seen each other in a little bit. Must be it. Pitching change now from Tim Tadlock quickly out of the dugout. Yeah, soon enough, but what a job by Brandon Beckham. He did. You know, he, he made some great pitches, got some great outs. Had a couple of balls hit hard. Just give up a couple of hits in his two innings of work. Three strikeouts. That second walk given up to Haas to start this inning. Let's go to break. We'll be back with the pitching change in just a minute. Moderate to severe eczema still disrupts my skin. Despite treatment, it disrupts my skin with itch. It disrupts my skin with rash. But now, I can disrupt eczema with Rinvoke. Rinvoke is not a steroid, topical, or injection. It's one pill, once a day. Many taking Rinvoke saw clear or almost clear skin, while some saw up to 100% clear skin. And they felt dramatic and fast itch relief, some as early as two days. That's Rinvoke relief. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attacks, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Disrupt the itch and rash of eczema. Talk to your doctor about Rinvoke. Learn how Abby can help you save. When you're looking for a new SUV, don't settle for some tired old design. For the freshest SUVs on the road, it has to be Honda. Honda SUVs are bolder and more beautiful than ever, including Ridgeline, Passport, HRV, the all new CRV, and the totally redesigned Honda Pilot, the biggest, most powerful Honda SUV ever, with more room inside so you can do more outside. So for the freshest SUVs on the road, see your greater Houston Honda dealer today. So the Red Raiders make the pitching change, and of course our pitching change tonight brought to you by Honda. Ryan Free out of the bullpen tonight, and he's another lefty, the third lefty to come out to the mound for the Red Raiders tonight. Yeah, this is the time of the game where each head coach is playing matchups. And Ryan Free, looking at specialist for the Red Raiders. He's yeah. making his fourth appearance of the season, four and two-thirds innings, giving up five hits. And seven strikeouts and a couple of walks. 6'2", 190 junior. And he will get to face Jack Moss to start things off. Well, junior college transfer from Grayson College. Boy of Frisco High School. See what Jim Schlossnagel and the Aggies choose to do here. Will he play small ball and try to advance Haas, set him up for post? They've been very aggressive tonight. 
as Free delivers to Moss, and that's a strike. Ninety-two mile an hour sinking fastball from Free. Start the sequence. Moss had a walk way back in the first. This one is inside. Make the count one and one. Three delivers. Beautiful pitch there. He broke that one right back the cross. I'm not sure that Jack Moss thought it was a strike, but it, it looked pretty good. Yeah, high slider catches the top of the zone, and that's in white. The tech catcher, good job of framing it up. The one-two pitch to Jack Moss. This one is hit to center, and it's going to be caught. Good job by the shortstop ranging back and making the catch. And Moss tried to inside out that fastball. He's got it in. Catches him off the handle. Not able to get over the head of Will Burns. Tech shortstop. Will Burns starting in the starting lineup tonight. Turned his hips got back and a nice leaping catch. Like he was headed to Burke. No man's land for a second. Just hung up a little too long. So this time he goes to first to chase the runner back. I've been really surprised at how deep both these teams are. They have a lot of good young players. Pitch to Austin Boast at the plate. Starts him out with the ball. Those two for two tonight. Two singles and a walk. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful pitch. It's paint on the outside corner. I see Ryan Free pitching awfully careful to post. That red Raider dugout knows how hot this guy is. And Big time players. Big time in these situations. And the throw goes back to first base. Foul ball by Bulls. Count goes to one and two. First ball just getting on his hands there. Pitch by Ryan Free. See if he can finish off Boast. Yeah, Boast is trying to show a lot of discipline at the plate. One and two here. And another throw back to first base. Is trying to get a big lead over there. Three with a long stare down, and he's going to go back to post again. Well, that's how he held his pick, so he can get off to commit. So the one-two offering coming to Boast, and now... Now pitch clock by him. Yes. Yep. Be a ball. Umpire was right on it. I felt like this game is starting to yeah. really slow down here. Yeah, Rod Teague said, no, sir. Yep, a lot of pickoff moves. And three have been taking a little bit too much time. I think it's called for it. 
So the 2-2 delivery now. Strike three called. That's a nice pitch. That is a big time breaking ball from Ryan Fury. Just locks up Austin Post. That's a huge out for the Red Raiders. <laughs> big out. I think that's what you were talking about earlier. Sometimes you can get caught up with that guy at first, and when you got a pitch clock going, you got to be careful. Yeah. So Targotch, the second baseman, now at the plate. Two down with a runner on first. That's uh, Hunter Haas. This one is hit deep to center field. But Dylan Carter goes back and he puts it away so the inning is over. So Ryan Free comes out of the bullpen and gets the job done. Being the new face of Dome Espa, Texas comes with a lot of responsibility. Thanks. Don't mess with Texas means don't litter. You know, it's always special to come back to the Toyota Center. I got so many memories here when I first got drafted in 2006 six by uh, Carol Dawson was still here and Daryl Morey actually, I think, made the pick. And so, you know, it's an honor, first of all, to be picked by those guys in this organization. And then I got many memories of being out here on the floor as soon as I got here that summer in 06 and worked with Jeff Van Gundy and Steve Clifford and Tom Thibodeau, and they were kicking my butt. And I was working out against Chuck Hayes, so it was kind of my initiation into the league, and I had incredible teammates, too. You know, I think back to Yao Ming and Tracy McGrady, Shane Battier, Jawan Howard, Dikembe Mutombo. You know, it's hard to think of a better team, a better group to come into as a rookie, so I was I was really thankful for that. The ball gets it back. Six seconds left. It's on no Oh, I remember that night. I was under Rick Adelman in my second season, and we didn't know we were on a 22-game win streak. At that point, it was, like you said, the eighth game of that streak. So, I think I've decided my favorite basketball genre is classic hard block. Or maybe arena block? Or soft block? I'll even get down on some country block, provided that country is turkey. And a lot of happy fans here at Minnie Mae Park tonight as we play the finale of the Shriners Children's College Classic. And what a classic it's been. Oh, We've had man. a great game tonight, and you've called every game in this series. <laughs> I love it, man. Sometimes I wonder, they, they pay me for watching college baseball. you got to love it. There you see the results <laughs> right there. It's been a great nine-game set, and you can see how we, <laughs> the results right there. Uh, uh, Louisville, you mentioned earlier, they've already won the tournament. They probably had the best outing of all the teams playing in the tournament this weekend. Well, they looked really strong, Butch. They really put it all together offensively. The pitching was outstanding. Great defense. I mean, you, know, you think about the, the three pieces of baseball, you got to do well. And they, they did them all well this weekend. So Nolan Hester down 0-2 in the count, and he hits this one. A charge in the left, and it's going to be a base hit as it falls in front of Caden Kent. Good job by Hester going the opposite way. Yeah, second half bat in a row, he's done that. And the pitch elevated up that over the plate. And one of those pitches you may think to yourself, I can I put a big time swing on this and get it out of here. And he just kind of goes with it. Good job of just putting the ball in play to left field, get that leadoff hit. Sandeo out for his second inning of work. Red Raiders looking to add a little bit of cushion to this one-run yeah. lead. Wood cannot feel comfortable against these Aggies. Gage Harrelson at the plate now for the Red Raiders. And the toss goes back to first. We're well, talking to Tim Tadlock before the tournament started. And asked about this environment coming to Minute Maid Park. Playing in a, obviously the home of the Houston Astros, big league environment. He says, you know, this is good for us. We need to learn how to win in big environments. And he likes the uh, the ability for their team to come early in the season 
and to play in this big environment, given some great competition and give these guys some reps in a big league ballpark. Thinks it does nothing but helps his guys get better. Pitch is a swing and a miss to Harrelson. Yeah, and like you said, it's the home of the World Series champions. That's right. <laughs> so that's got to be pretty cool any way you look at it. It is. Yeah, once the game gets started, you know, the players kind of forget about it. It's just, yeah. again, another baseball game, but still a great place to come and enjoy this environment. It's a great level of competition all weekend is going to do nothing to make these teams better. So a two and one count now to Gage Harrelson. As a runner at first, that is Hester. Swing and a miss. Some smoke on that one. 89 on a fastball and just well located by Sadeo. Let's hit the target. Wow. Struck him out. Just a nice job. Harrelson walking back those last two pitches. Just well executed the left arm of Shane Sadeo. That's a big out, number one. No advancement from Hester at first base. Kevin Bassell, the pitcher now. 0 for 3 in the ball game. Fans down there. <laughs> the project down to the lower deck. You know, can you see both of these two teams making their way through the playoffs, making it back to the World Series? You really could. Both of them have the talent. And obviously, you get into conference play and really get challenged, but you know, there's a base hit. Another base hit that drops in there. So, Gazelle, as Hester goes to second. Bazell now one for three on the night. And this time gets the fastball in, and he really got an inside outside pitch. Takes it right back up the middle, and great job by Bazell to pull those hands in and barrel to it. A couple of hits this inning, then dumped right in front of Aggie Outfielders, that time in front of Tab Tracy. And now Jim Schlossnagel out. That'll be it for Sadeo. Oh, yes. Yeah, he came in and. A pretty up and down uh, uh, out. Got some good things done, but now he's going to take a break. So they will exit after an inning, give it a four hits. He's responsible for the two Red Raiders on the base pass. Now we get an exit from the bullpen. We've been waiting a while there. <laughs> we'll take a break and be right back with the pitching change. when I was at a friend's party. Mia, can you send me that? Sure. Everyone keeps asking. Mia, can you send me that? Even my French neighbor. Mia. Green light. I mean, all the time. Red light. Can you send me that? I'm not making this up. Hey, can you send me that? Everyone. Sure. The reviews are in, and everyone loves Season Pass from TXU Energy. 50% off your energy charges all winter and summer. What's not to love? I saved $450 last year. Half off for half the year is a real crowd pleaser. Even when the weather's changing, I'm still saving. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. You can say that again. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. I didn't mean literally. TXU Energy. Energy for everything. 
Our pitching change here in the bottom of the seventh brought to you by Honda. Will Johnson, the lefty, the new pitcher for Texas A&M as he comes on with a couple of Red Raiders on the base path. Yeah, Will Johnson's been used as a closer by Jim Schlossnagel. Sadeo, of course, is the pitcher of record, and uh, he owns the two guys that are on base. Justin's fastball will sit 93 to 95. He's got two breaking balls, more of a downward breaking curveball and a slider. He came on strong at the end of last year, pitched in some big time situations, and he has earned the title of closer so far, making his fourth appearance of the season. Only has a couple of innings under his belt. And talk about high leverage now. He's yeah. trying to hold these Red Raiders down. He comes in, one out and two on. So he will have his work cut out for him. That's Will Johnson, number 15. How about that Aggie fan? He's got the new jersey. He's got a, a he's got a t-shirt version of it, but that's it right there. That is. Four cadets, special uniform. He is wearing the top tonight. The Aggies have the entire ensemble on and right down to the shoes books they've got uh, even the shoes are hand painted with the uh, spur that the four cadets wear so johnson delivers and it's a swing and a miss you know we didn't talk about the cap but that cap the team is wearing on the field features the core logo front and center in a really good spot yeah a little darker the typical maroon caps at the Aggie Sport. And they got the uh, Aggie white core belt going. Austin Green at the plate. This time he chops on it. Foul. And will make the count 0-2. A couple of breaking balls back to back from Johnston. Johnson ready with the 0-2 delivery. And it's low. Bounce it up there to Green. And I tried to bury that 0-2 breaking ball and Green not biting on it. So Will Johnson ready to go again at one and two. This one is fouled off again. He had the right idea, though. He was trying to punch it in the right. And as a hitter, he can't sit on that breaking pitch either. It's, it's a pretty nasty one, but then he brought that 94 mile hour fastball on the outside. And he's just able to get a piece of it, keep the at bat alive. And Johnson has another one low and in the dirt. Oh, great job by J.D. Bricks and the Aggie catcher knocking that pitch down, keeping it right in front of him. You know, we've seen three Aggie catchers in this series, and they've used all three of them, and they've looked, you know, really good in this series. They have. And we saw Coffer on Friday and Hank Bard last night. And breaks in today. So the 2-2 two -two pitch. And it's going to be another foul ball. Foul ball. That breaking ball, that's the pitch that Justin is trying to get Green out on. And Green has spoiled a couple of them. So they'll reload and come back with the 2 2 offering again. May have been a foul tip on that play, but a good catch by Gregson. Strikeout to Austin Green. 82 mile an hour slider. And boy, does this pitch have some bite and downward tilt. Watch it just disappear off the barrel of Austin Green. And really just a nasty pitch. You know, you're out there working. You just came out of the bullpen. You've been in that situation. You know, is it a cat and mouse game as to who's going to give in? To... Well, yeah, and especially with it this late in the game. And 
you know, you're going to bring the guy in that you feel like has the best pitch to get these next two, two guys out because the Red Raiders have a chance here to add to their lead. Boy, this game is gone. You can't afford to get up any more runs. Ty Coleman with a swing and a miss. Goes down in the count. 0-1. Johnson delivers outside, make it a one and one count now. He's pitched with a lot of confidence since he came into this game. Hester on second, Bazell at first. Swing and a miss. 96 on that fastball. These guys are bringing it tonight. I mean, <laughs> we had Cortez in there hitting 98. Yeah, that's big time. Let's see if he comes back with that breaking pitch. That's his out pitch. Coleman walked and scored a run tonight. And he fouls that one back. They challenged Coleman. And Coleman had a good swing on it. He just missed it. slider yeah he, he thought about it for a second I don't know how you do that these guys are great athletes wanted to pull the trigger but he held it back so Coleman has worked this thing out to a 2-2 count swing and a miss down low he left the third the first base to get him but what a job by Will Johnson came in out of the bullpen Got a couple of strikeouts. Two to one, Red Raiders will be back. Wow. Mia, can you send me that? Sure. Mia, can you send me that? Mia, can you send me that? Hey, can you send me that? Texans are saving big with TXU Energy Season Pass. 50% off energy charges all winter and summer. I saved $450 last year. Best move I ever made. You still got it, Dad. You've also got the TXU Energy app, where you can track your savings anytime. Now that's a win. And that's a big win. You keep dancing, I'll keep saving. With Season Pass, everybody wins. TXU Energy. Energy for everything. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. Well, the air guitar cam was sweeping the stadium here just a minute ago and got some of the folks <laughs> on hand pretty excited about it. Got the energy going here. They've been made, of course, we haven't needed that to produce energy. How about this game? <laughs> no, sir. It is as advertised tonight. And we have Trevor Warner leading off for the Texas A&M Aggies, and they trail in this one 2-1 to one to Texas Tech. Ryan Free came on out of the bullpen. He's a lefty. And Free starts him off a little low. Oh, just a classic matchup between these two powerhouse clubs. 
Both have gained national prominence over the last decade. And, and Werner hits it on the ground. It goes to short. And the throw to first is in time. That was Burns to catch. Nice job by Burns. Yeah, good scoop and throw. Slow roller had to come up hard on it. Nice job by Gavin Cash to get his foot on the bag. He's a good-looking player. I mean, he does a lot of good things at the plate, and we've seen him make some good defensive plays over there at first. Well, we know about his offensive capabilities, but uh, he really has made some tremendous defensive plays all weekend at first base. Chase Laviolette at the plate now for the Aggies. He's one for three tonight. That's a strike. Beautiful pitch. He had a single back in the second. We're in top of the eighth now with the Aggies trailing two to one. Pulled that fastball. You know, the other thing I noticed about this tournament is you really got a good look at how good these bullpens are. And you can see which teams, you know, are deep in pitching and which teams weren't. Yeah, a lot of depth. Most of these pins. Nice breaking ball. <laughs> he broke that one up. Beautiful pitch by Ryan Free. So that makes it a 2 2 count. You just get the sense that Free can throw that breaking ball whenever he wants. And a number of times behind the count. The payoff on 2 2. And it's outside. So Jace Robulet takes it all the way. 3 2 count. Well, the Aggies need base runners. Robulet will take whatever is given to him here. So Ryan Free reached back for something extra and he got the strike. Oh, he did. That was his challenge me fastball right there. Three rares back and just blows it by. Here's the lobby left. Just got it above his hands and no chance. Number 31, Jordan Thompson, will be the pinch hitter for Tab Tracy as he steps to the plate. Starts him out with a strike. Ahead in the count. 0 and 1. Yes, cool. That was, you can hear the Red Raider fans that time. They didn't think that missed. It's a ball. Count now 1 and 1. And Ryan Free acting like Picasso out there. He is just painting the corners. Not giving in to these Aggie hitters. Not much to swing at. That one catches the kneecaps on Thompson. And that's a strike. And a good job by Hudson White. We were talking about his framing earlier. Boy, he did a good job framing that one. The one-two delivery to Thompson. Ha! Free, ready to go back to work. Outside. Another count goes to 3 2. And a couple of fastballs he's just gotten behind with. And didn't quite get through his arm slot. So free on 3 and 2, and it's going to be ball 4. 
so Texas A&M has a base runner. They trail by a run here in the eighth. Yeah, great plate discipline by Thompson. Had gotten down early in the count. A couple of pitches that were just off that outside edge and held up on it. He earned that walk. Caden Kemp will step into the box now for the Aggies. The other thing Ryan Free does as a left hander, he really keeps that Aggie running game in check. I think he showed early on they were going to be super aggressive on the base paths. And Free has done a good job holding base runners on. <laughs> there he is with another strike. Texas Tech has come out of that bullpen with three lefties, and they've all done a really good job tonight. Caden Kent now with the 0 and 1 count. Swing, miss. Took something off it. And the front door breaking ball, and that was up and in. What a pitch that Kent was looking for. The 0-2 delivery will have to wait because he goes back to first to chase Thompson back to the bag. and drop in. The water is my canvas. Let the good times begin. Perfect sets and barrels I chase. Where sand becomes surf, waves set the pace. A childhood accident couldn't ruin my vibes. Thanks to one special place, I've never been more alive. Watch me. Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Moderate to severe eczema still disrupts my skin. Despite treatment, it disrupts my skin with itch. It disrupts my skin with rash. But now, I can disrupt eczema with Rinvoke. Rinvoke is not a steroid, topical, or injection. It's one pill once a day. Many taking Rinvoke saw clear or almost clear skin, while some saw up to 100% clear skin. And they felt dramatic and fast itch relief, some as early as two days. That's Rinvoke relief. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attacks, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Disrupt the itch and rash of eczema. Talk to your doctor about Rinvoke. Learn how Abby can help you save. Let's check out the game summary from tonight. That's Ghost right there with a base hit. Gregson scored on the play, and the Aggies actually got on the board first. They sure did. Looked good offensively early on, but just have left too many runners on base. They did. The big two-run shot right there. That actually put the Red Raiders in front right there. The throw was in time from Jaden Caden Kent, but it was not handled well, so the Red Raiders go out in front, and that is where we are right now. A two-to-one game here in the bottom of the eighth. What a game of inches. The throw from Kent was, I felt like, right on the yeah. money. He'd like to set up there at home plate. And Gregson had a chance to catch it and put the tag down, but unsuccessful. So Gavin Cash with a pop-up, and it's handled by the shortstop, Hunter Haas. And that is the first out of the inning. You know, I've watched Hunter Haas play entire series, and that young man is an excellent 
defensive player also. I mean, my goodness. Like you said, everything that's hit to short, he gobbles it up. Yeah, he's got game. And what you love is just the smooth movements, too. It doesn't look like anything's forced. Just great footwork at shortstop. And yeah, it's made some tough plays look pretty easy. Hudson White takes a strike to start off his at-bat. Swing and a miss by White. So a nice pitch by Will Johnson. And 95 on the inside corner by Johnston. And once again, blowing fastballs by some of these tech hitters. 0-2 is fouled off. That's not too much of a play. Switching balls and the breaking ball set up. See if he tries to bury that breaking ball down. He's got a couple of strikeouts with that pitch. Will Johnston delivers and it's a swing and a miss. Boy, he broke that one off nicely from the strikeout. Will Johnston. You know, Hudson White's a bit frustrated with his hitting tonight, but boys, he's been great defensively. That will bring up Dylan Carter. He's the center fielder. Had the two RBIs that put the Red Raiders out in front. Starts him out with the ball. Oh, oh man. I think it did. Yep. You take your base. Kind of scraped him in the back right there. So Johnston hits Dylan Carter, and he goes down to first. Yeah, that's where the ball just gets away from Johnston. And Nick's Carter on the leg. A strike to Will Burns. 0 for 3 tonight with three strikeouts. Yeah, the Aggies have attacked him with fastballs. He hasn't really been able to catch up to one yet. There it is again. Strike two to Will Burns. He's got 95 fast one hour fastballs back to back. Gonna stay hard here, try to elevate a bit. So Johnston delivers on 0-2, and it's a swing and a miss, and he got the strikeout. How about Will Johnston? Yeah, electric arm, he has been dynamic. The Aggies have three outs left. they got to get a run. Texas Tech out in front, 2-1. to one. for this next step i think it just prepares me in a way like i'm ready um, to come in at any position any role and adjust and adapt and i think that that's something that a lot of teams need you were really impressive to rockets fans and anybody who saw summer league drew league all of that what do you think you bring to the table and, and how did those adventures kind of help you i just you know wanted to showcase my talent in summer league showcase my skills show the fan base what i could do what's to come i just love basketball you know i like playing basketball wherever it's at so any chance i get to go and play some pickup ball you know i'm gonna do it tell me about tari growing up what made you love basketball and, and how soon did you know this is what i want to do really really ever since i was born to be honest <laughs> some of my earliest memories were me just watching basketball i, I don't really know it kind of just shows me I love that catch Astros spring training action on AT&T Sportsnet time now to take a look at our player of the game that would be Dylan Carter with a base hit to left, it's going to be a two-run single. You see one runner is in, 
and then Cash slides in safely for the second run, and that is why we are out in front right now. Demand Science brought you our player of the game, Dylan Carter. One for two tonight, a two-run single. So a new pitcher coming on for the Red Raiders. It's number 31, Damian Bravo. He'll be on the mound. Yeah, Bravo in a close situation. Nothing like throwing a freshman out there to get your close in a big game here early this season. But the 6'2", 195-pound freshman from Hopton City, Texas. Bravo gets the call for the Red Raiders. And the pitching change brought to you tonight by Honda as Damian Bravo, the right-hander, goes to the mound. We have a pinch hitter coming up for the Aggies. It's going to be Wells. Kaysen Wells, the pinch hitter. For Gregson. One and one. And the problem making his fourth appearance. He is 1-0 in the season. Has not given up an earned run. Three innings. He has been spotless. Five punch outs, one walk. Well, that's what you like to have in a reliever. So Wells is up in a big spot here. He fouls that one away. Make the count two and two to Kaysen Wells. Bravo with the low 90s fastball. Change up and a breaking ball, but a really good command. Wells a 5'8, 180 pounder, and it's high. Make it ball three. And the slider got away from him. And... Ooh, nice change up to Wells at third pitch. See if he comes back with it. Wells from San Antonio on 3-2, and it's outside. And he coached the walk. Does a great job to give the Aggies a base runner. Here in the ninth. And that was not the plan. You don't want to walk the leadoff guy with a one-run lead. Especially a guy like Casey Wells, who, who can motor on the base pass. Big-time situation for the young right-handed reliever for Texas Tech. So Bravo will face Hunter Hawks, who has a base hit and a walk tonight, and he starts him off with a strike. Haas one for three with that walk. Well, Brazil in at third for Tech. He's anticipating the punt, but Haas didn't show it. Well, that's a beautiful pitch there. Strike call. 0-2 on the count now. Nice yeah, slider. Good snap with that pitch. This one is lofted high to center field. Center fielder comes out. He makes the play. Good catch out there by Carter. And Haas got fooled on a slider. Just kind of flipped his bat out there. Decent contact, but Dan Carter reads it really well off the bat. Just broke in. Made that catch look easy. He did. Good jump on the ball, and of course, Wells had nowhere he could go on that. So that'll bring up Jack Moss. Moss is 0 for 3 with a walk. Starts him out with the ball. So Bravo goes to first, just in case he had any ideas about trying to get in scoring position. Oh, that's a little closer. And he caught to uh, Casey Wells in between steps there. A little scurry back.
The 1-0 delivery is outside. Make it 2-0. Big time pitch coming up. You certainly don't want to give in to Moss, but then you've got Boast on deck. You're going to challenge Moss. This one is fouled off. He did exactly what you said he would do. <laughs> he came on after. Yes, he did. <laughs> Good swing by Moss. Two, one is the count to Moss, and it's low. Ball gets away. Wells will go to second on the wild pitch. So Wells is at second now. There's a three-one count. First base is open, but you certainly can't put the winning run at first base. And we got a little bit of a pickle here for Bravo. He's worked himself into. That's him right back to get that wild pitch. Well, Jack Moss now with an opportunity to tie this game. And it's a strike call, make it 3 2. Nice breaking ball. Moss showing a lot of savvy at the plate for the Aggies. Swing and a miss. He's going to try to go to third as Wells, and he's going to make it easily. So, Wells. Showing off his speed, so now the tying run moves into third base as well. Takes third on the out at first. Well, great pitch by Bravo. He's breaking ball down, gets Moss to chase. That's in white, makes a good throw to first base. Checked case of Wells, but Wells was determined to get to third base. And watch the read from Wells. Just a great read. Yep. Steps off, gets an extra step, then takes off. And Right, Gavin Cash had no chance. Great job by Mizzou at third base just to smother that ball. Strike him out, throw him out, and now we have Austin Boast at the plate and starts him off with the ball. What a great stop by Hudson White. And he had to dive out there to make that stop. Great job by the catcher. Just saved the run right there. Wells down at third. With Austin Boast, who knocked in the first run tonight for the Aggies. Gives him a strike inside. Well, Bravo just can't afford to bury a breaking ball here. Just throwing it to the backstop. Bravo gets set and delivers. As a hitter in that situation, do you just... Forget about that pitch that he's not going to throw it because he won't take the chance in this situation. Well, I, I mean, Boast is looking for something out of the plate to hit. He just hasn't had one to, to swing at yet. Three sliders in a row. Wow, awesome. Man, a lot. <laughs> Bravo throws the fastball to White. He was expecting breaking ball. How in the world do you get crossed up with a pitch con like that? Look at that catch wow. by White. My goodness. He was jumping outside, and now they're going to talk about that. Yeah, that's uh, that just can't happen this late in the game. A good timeout by White just to calm things down a bit. He's like, what, what side did you get on your watch? <laughs> <laughs> like, I know what I got on mine. Man, what an outstanding job by the Red Raider catcher. He has uh, saved this game twice. Yeah, it's come right down to the wire. But the Red Raiders one out away. But the Aggies have the tying run at third. So the 3 1 delivery. And it's going to be a take your base ball four. It's a great at bat by Austin Boast. Yeah, no doubt. You want to be the hero in this situation if you're Austin Boast, but you also have to have some plate discipline and not swing at a bad pitch. And he does just that. He very patient in that at bat earns the walk and that puts the winning run or the go-ahead run at first base and you know he would be pitch run for but what a job by Austin Post. Number four is Travis Chestnut on to run for Boast at first base. And now Chestnut represents the go-ahead run for the Aggies and I love this matchup with Gargosh. Yeah, he can hit, but he can put the bat on the ball. Ryan Targosh at the plate for the Aggies. The ball is low, and it gets away from the catcher. And on the play, Chestnut will take second base. 
Well, how about the save by the umpire? Ron Teague, that ball hit him. It definitely got by. <laughs> Catch your Hudson White. And I think uh, Teague got hit that spot that no man wants to get hit in. Yeah, he's smiling about it, though. So yeah. He's, let's take another look. Watch it bounce up yeah. and catches it flush. Oh. <laughs> He'll be singing a different tune tomorrow. Yeah, that might have been the time run that that ball not hit him. Yep. Well, White did not get a glove or a body on it. Pop T. Pretty good there, so. Targaj now at the plate. Runners on second and third. The lead run at second base for the Aggies. And Bravo having some command issues with that slider. That's his 2 0 to Targaj. It's a big spot for Damian Bravo. Boy, he just missed with that one. But it's going to be ball three. So the Aggies are one pitch away from loading the bases. Well, they're going to put Targach on him. Yep. That's, That's the ball call. three. Yeah. That's the right call. You, you don't want to give in to him there and try to come back to a three ball count. That's just not the, not the play there. So they'll get a fresh count here with Warner. But well, if you're the Aggies, you've got to love this situation. Trevor Warner. Down the bat, and uh, the freshman Damian Bravo really struggling to find command. What a game, Butch. Tim Tadlock going all the way with Damian Bravo here. Bases loaded. His team has a one run lead, and they're offering to Warner. Well, I think what this crowd has gotten into it now. Yeah, I didn't miss by much. That's a good pitch. I thought White framed it pretty well. He did. So ball one to Trevor Warner. Good pitch again. Another yeah. close one. Yeah, this is Aggie Crown. So ball seven is what they're yelling. <laughs> Bravo goes 2-0 to a very good hitter in Warner. Now he's 3-0. Well, nowhere to put Warner. Warner should be taking a strike here. The delivery. Ball four, and he walked in the tying run. So Damian Bravo with the bases loaded. Walks in the tying run as Austin... Excuse me, he comes in to score was number 20 on the play. And yep. we are tied. That is Kaysom Wells. Well, you're thinking now you got to go get him, but uh, no movement out of that Red Raider dugout. Maybe now. And that Tim Tadlock's taking that last step, and he is going to head out to the mound. Yeah, I'm thinking you're, you can't stick with him in this situation. You gave him the opportunity, but the base is loaded. And well, he did give him the opportunity. Yeah. He gave him every opportunity to get out of the jam. But the Yankees have rallied here in the top of the ninth to tie the ball game at two apiece. Yeah, three walks in a row and four for the inning. The Bravo just could not locate that slider. And Tadlock with some words of encouragement saying, hey, I left you in there to work out of it, but uh, I'm going to come back to you. Too good of a talent not to use him again here in the near future. We'll be back with the pitching change in just a minute. When you're looking for a new SUV, don't settle for some tired old design. For the freshest SUVs on the road, it has to be Honda. Honda SUVs are bolder and more beautiful than ever, including Ridgeline, Passport, HRV, the all-new CRV, and the totally redesigned Honda Pilot, the biggest, most powerful Honda SUV ever, with more room inside so you can do more outside. So for the freshest SUVs on the road, see your greater Houston Honda dealer today. As the H-E-B Bowmaster, I always get excited for the season because it's the most wonderful time of year for crawfish. And at H-E-B, we sell more crawfish in Texas than anyone. 
we're talking big, fresh, live Louisiana crawfish. Plus, with our in-store boils, we do the prepping, spicing, and cooking. So you can just pinch, pull, and be merry. H-E-B. Here, crawfish season is better. A promise is a trust not to be broken. Whether spoken with an oath... Do you solemnly swear? It's your first day. You know I got your back, right? Or seal with a pinky. In 1922, a group of soldiers launched USAA with a promise to take care of their own. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission. Always. This game has turned out to be everything we thought it would be. Another pitching change brought to you tonight by Honda. Number 35, Garrett Crowley, enters the ball game for the Red Raiders, and he comes in to a game that's tied at two after the Aggies just walked three times in a row, four walks in the innings, three consecutive bases on balls. Yeah, it's sad to see a game, you know, get pitched like that where you've got a lead and, you know, it's a lot of free bases here given up by by the Red Raiders, but uh, Damian Bravo just could not find the handle on that slider and just lost command. But uh, Garrett Crowley called upon now with the bases still juiced with Aggies. And the 6'4", 250-pound senior transfer from Fordham University. He's a fifth-year guy making his second appearance. Only pitched inning in a third. has given up three hits. You know, one strikeout, one walk, but big-time situation for Crowley. No doubt he starts Lavalette off with a strike, so Crowley, at least with the first pitch, comes in and makes a nice delivery to the plate. So Jace Lavalette with the chance to give the Aggies the lead at the plate. This one is hit down the line foul off the bat of Lavalette. And that was headed toward the well with the cameras, and and some folks scattering down by the Texas Tech dugout. So Crowley up in the count now, 0-2. As there's a loose ball on the field, they'll have to pick up. That'll be a souvenir for one of the fans down the field, down the left field line, right field line, excuse me. James Lavalette now down in the count. 0-2 with the bases loaded. That's a big strikeout right there by Garrett Crowley. He came in in a big jam, and he worked his way out of it with a big strikeout. Here at the Astros Foundation, we strive to harness the passion of our fans to be a force for good in our community. Through key fundraising efforts like our Community Leaders Program and the Diamond Dreams Gala, we're able to redistribute millions of dollars back to support the community that supports us all season long. Log on to astros.com slash foundation to find out how you can affect positive change in our community. Watch me. Watch me roll, grind, and spin. Playgrounds for wheels. That's always a win. One with my chair, but never held back. I do things sitting down. Most people standing can't hack. Some might say my condition was fate. My doctors would tell you I'm just redefining great. Watch me. Life-changing orthopedic excellence at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Watch me shine with every snap. Born to move fans, to cheer and clap. Two different legs, that's how I play. One built from science to help me on the deck. Between these lines, I'm all heart and muscle. Don't stare too long, you'll miss the hustle. Watch me. Pioneers in prosthetic technology at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. We head to the bottom of the ninth with the game tied at two apiece after that big rally by the fighting Texas Aggies in the top of the ninth inning. They were down two to one, came back to tie it up. And so now the Red Raiders will get their shot. Yeah, the Red Raiders went out of way. They just could not seal the deal in the ninth. Top of the ninth. And now they'll come to hit the bottom. 
And Will Johnston back on the hill for the Aggies. Nolan Hester will lead it off to Texas Tech. Another pitch high to Hester. And the has been solid since coming in relief. And Sadeo, just an inning and two-thirds, four strikeouts. Oh, wow. Great pitch by Will Johnston. So the count goes to two and one to Nolan Hester. Hester with two hits tonight. Make it 3 1. And that's ball four. So both teams going through some control problems right now. Yeah, and Joshua pitched clean at this point. Well, he had one hit batter. Hit Dylan Carter with that slider last inning. But he really showed pretty good command up until that point with Hester. Gage Harrelson now steps up to the plate. 0 for 3 with a walk. And the ball gets away. He was trying to bunt him over to second. Take a look at Hester with a big turn at second base. But he will stop as the ball got away from the catcher. And Hank Bard here just coming to the game in place of J.D. Gregson. Remember, Gregson was pinch hit for in the top of the ninth. And, uh, not sure if the bunt attempt by Harrelson blocked his vision, but uh, that ball gets underneath him. And, and Tim Tadlock and half girls Harrelson bunt again to try to move Hester over to third. The winning run now on second base for the Red Raiders. Gage Harrison tries to bump, but he gets it out, and it's caught. A nice play by the third baseman, Trevor Werner. Does a great job coming down the line and makes the first out of the inning. And not the kind of attempt that Tim Tallock was looking for. Kind of stabbed at that pitch a little bit up in the zone. And it was a breaking ball, and just popped it up right to third baseman. Warner. Nice job to go and make the catch in foul territory. Nice job by Warner making that play because the base runner could not advance, and that is huge for the Aggies. Kevin Bazell at the plate. Nice block by Bard. The Yankees do have a couple of really nice catches on this team, and Bard comes in, and he makes a nice play there. So Bazell back in the box now with a 1-0 count. Johnston bounces it, bounced it in again. Good hold by Bazell. Johnson's well, got a nasty breaking ball, but uh, he's thrown a number of them in the dirt. He put a lot of pressure on his catcher, Hank Barr, to keep those pitches in front. So the delivery. And it gets away from Barr again. Oh, three in a row. Three and oh is the count. Well, we're going to put the Brazil yeah. on as well. Pat, I was going to yep. ask you, could this be one of those... Unintentional, intentional walks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it becomes intentional. Yeah, exactly right. They pitched around Bazell. And, and they get the double play in order. And Aggies will play back up the middle. So Austin Green comes to the plate, the second baseman. First pitch is a strike. Green's one for four on the night. 92 on our fastball at the kneecaps.
Will Johnson delivers inside and low again. So Bart has come in and he's had to make a couple of nice plays already on balls that were down and in the dirt. Justin had a tough time trying to locate that the breaking pitch. So Red Raiders are going to be thinking when they see spin, just spit on it. Sit on that fastball and kind of make Yeski out of the dugout yet again for the Aggies. And have to have a conversation with Will Johnston. Yeah, Austin Green showing a lot of patience at the plate, but Will Johnston also will not give in. 34 pitches in to his outing. 19 strikes. In the two and one count with Austin Green. It's a chance for Will Johnson to catch his breath and he focus, try to dial that breaking pitch back into the strike zone. That's that's yeah. his out pitch. He's keeping that ball down there because if nothing else, if he doesn't get the strikeout, he'd like to try to have a shot at the double play. Exactly. With one out in the inning. So he's getting set for a 2-1 delivery to Austin Green. And it's ball three. So Justin, again, not giving in at all. Hester at second, Bazell at first. This one is foul down the third baseline. Well, Green did get the fastball that time. Well located. Get in on the hands of Austin Green. Now we got a full count. Yeah, he's going to set up a yeah. nice pitch here. <laughs> the payoff getting set to Austin Green. One of the high risk pitches, the breaking ball here. Red he's Raiders have. Award. Yep. Yeah. Red Raiders have two on. And this one is chopped to third. And the third baseman cannot come up with it. And he, he's safe on third. Wow. How about that one? Trevor Werner, who made the big play earlier. Well, this is not play because the ball bounced off of Trevor Werner at third base. Now, you've got uh, the base runner, Nolan Hester, coming into third base. Is there obstruction there? And the third base umpire, Clint Fagan, signals no. Because the ball had gone off a of Werner to begin with, that's a deflected ball, so Hester has a chance to get to third base. There's not no obstruction call. And now the bases are loaded for the Red Raiders. Werner's going to have, let's see, is that an error on the It's going to be E5, from, yeah. Yeah, E5 on Werner, so that's going to load him up. Ty Coleman at the plate, he takes one low. Well, Ty Coleman struck out against Johnston his previous at bat, but he was a, a real batter. Yeah, Coleman, 0 for 3 tonight with a walk. Maggie's defense playing up on the ground. Foul back, so Coleman hanging tough. And the Aggies defensively up the middle will play it like this. If the ball's hit hard, they may try to turn two. If they think they can get the double play, more than likely you'll see them come home to try to cut Hester down. They can't afford, obviously, to give up the run. The Aggies defensively are going to play this tight. Moss up on the infield grass at first. And the pitch is outside. So make it two and one to Ty Coleman. Aggie outfielders are about five to six steps in where they typically play. Anything over their head, they know it's going to be a ball game. So two one count, and the pitch to Coleman, a strike. 
from Johnston. And took a fastball right down the middle. Johnston just challenged him, and Holman did not pull the trigger. Yeah, he looked like he was taken all the way there. So now we have a 2-2 count. Johnston delivers, and it's a swing and a miss. The ball is in the dirt. So Coleman goes down with his second straight strikeout. This time with the bases loaded in a 2-2 ball game. Huge pitch by Johnston. That was a nasty breaking ball. Second time in a row, he's got Coleman swinging at that pitch. Oh, great job by Barr to keep it in front. Huge out number two for Will Johnston and the Aggies. Uh, he just couldn't lay off it. So Gavin Cash will be the batter for the Red Raiders. What a visit here by the Aggie catcher. Just kind of set the defense and keep Johnston breathing. A lot of high-stress pitches here in the last couple of hitters. Good job by Barr to take control here. And still out of the woods, going to face Gavin Cash. Yeah, Cash coming up. Two down, bases loaded. But Bill Johnston has done a really good job here. I know we got the bases loaded, but he does not look like the moment is too big for him watching him on the mat. Not at all. He is uh, competing well. Despite the couple of walks this in. So the first offering to Cash lifted into the air and is going to be caught in center field. And we are going to go into extra innings as the Aggies work out of a major jam with the bases loaded. We're going to come back for the top of the tenth, all tied at two apiece. Moderate to severe eczema still disrupts my skin. Despite treatment, it disrupts my skin with itch. It disrupts my skin with rash. But now, I can disrupt eczema with Rinvoke. Rinvoke is not a steroid, topical, or injection. It's one pill, once a day. Many taking Rinvoke saw clear or almost clear skin, while some saw up to 100% clear skin. And they felt dramatic and fast itch relief, some as early as two days. That's Rinvoke relief. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Disrupt the itch and rash of eczema. Talk to your doctor about Rinvoke. Learn how Abby can help you save. Look, I can ask the full struggle. I gotta get up and hustle. I gotta push through the pain, cause really that's how you build muscle. Catch Astros spring training action on AT&T Sportsnet. And the Red Raiders will have a new pitcher. He's number 42, Kyle Robinson. He comes on the pitching chains brought to you by Honda tonight. Robinson, a big right-hander. Well, the sixth Red Raider pitcher. You said it, Butch. 6'6", 210, sophomore, second year with the Red Raiders at the end of Virginia. I think his third appearance of the season. Now, he has started twice. This is his first relief appearance. He has gone six innings, given up ten hits. Seven earned runs. Struck out five, walked three. So, Robinson, that swingman role of going from starter to reliever, here tonight trying to get the win for the Red Raiders so number 31 Jordan Thompson will lead it off for the Aggies here in the top of the 10th
First pitch to Thompson is high oh. and tight. Almost caught a deer hole. Caden Kent on deck. Pitch another one is high and tight. First two pitches are right there on him inside. Yeah, certainly not intentional. You're not trying to hit the first guy in your face. Just a couple of overthrown fastballs. So Kyle Robinson goes 3-0 and to the first batter here in the top of the 10th. So the Aggies have the leadoff batter on. Well, here comes the chance. Aggie faithful, and not many people have left here, Butch. It's still <laughs> pretty loud here at Minute Maid. We got a packed house. So Caden Kent comes up now for the Aggies. I'm going to bring Matt Gardner out of the dugout, the pitching coach for Tech. Caden Kent with an 0 for 4 night tonight. Texas Tech has issued 13 walks in this game and one hit by pitch. That is an amazing stat. It is. It really is. And that just means for the Aggies, they've left a whole bunch of runners on base. Make it 13 now. 13 left on base. And 13 walks by Texas Tech. This is one of those games when your pitching coach for the Red Raiders is going to pretty upset at the end of this game. And if you're the hitting coach for the Aggies, you're thinking the same thing. Man, well, they're not pushing runs across with 13 free bases. He only have two runs at the board with 13 free bases. So Caden Kent will come to the plate with a runner at first. That is Jordan Thompson. And he starts Kent out with a strike. That's a good round visit. Matt Gardner saying, son, you got to breathe. <laughs> Just slow the game down. Breathe and play catch. You know, the last eight Texas A&M base runners were all by walks. Swung on, and it's outside. Uh, yeah, he, he held his swing. The pitch was just missed off the outside edge, so count one to one. This one is smashed to first. Steps on the bag for one, throws to second, and he's not in time. So Thompson beats the rap at second after Kent hits into a field of choice. Yeah, nice job by Gavin Cash to field it cleanly and try to make that throw to second, but you know, Jordan Thompson's speed and allows him to get there. And so it works out as a sacrifice for Kent, even though he got the swing. It's Jordan Thompson to second base. Now puts the go-ahead run there for the Aggies. That brings up number 48. That's Hank Barth, the catcher. Starts him out with the ball. Boy, that was really close, but it's outside. Make it ball two. Well, Robinson sitting 94, 95 with the fastball. Good heater. by Bard. Good pitch. Couldn't catch up to that. Yeah. That's a giddy up. Let's see another fastball here. 
2-1 delivery from Bard. It's a swing and a miss. You called it, Pat. Now the count is even at two. Swing and a miss, and he got it. The strikeout by Kyle Robinson. Yeah, pulled the string there with a changeup. That's a nasty downward tilt to it. It's the bottom draw that changeup. So that will bring the Aggies to the top of the lineup and Hunter Haas to face Robinson and he starts him out with the ball. A big curveball from Robinson. This is wide. Thompson holding tight at second with two down here in the top of the tenth. Hunter Haas, the hitter. And that one is bounced in. Boy, you see Thompson thought about it for just a second, then he decided to get back. Well, second time this game that the ball's getting by Hudson White and hit Ron Teague, the home plate umpire. Credit Teague with the save again. Well, Thompson had to read that. He was ahead to third base, but had to put the stop sign up. So the two-run delivery from Robinson. Low. Both coaches have done such a great job pushing all the right buttons in this game so far. They really have. One of those intense games, and it, uh, obviously the matchup we had hoped for, and certainly the fans here at Minute Maid have looked for. This just uh, feels like a postseason game, not, it does. not the 11th game of the season. Robinson delivers and it's fouled off down the line there. You know, it looked like they missed each other. You said before they haven't played since 2017. So the 3 2 count now to Hunter Hawks. This one is hit. And it's going to be a foul ball over the third baseman's head, but it comes down in foul territory. Yeah, Haas got jammed on that fastball up and in. And somehow was able to get the barrel through the zone. Made a bit for it, but that ball was fouled by about a good 10, 12 feet. Haas is one for four tonight. He also walked. And now the count is full. Swing and a miss. What a big time outing by Robinson as he got out of a little jam there. Kyle Robinson comes on for the Red Raiders and will give them a chance to win this ball game at the bottom of the tent. This is Ford Truck Month, Texas. Time to get up and get into Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight, including Ford F-150 and the all-new Ford Super Duty. Or check out Ford Maverick and Ford Ranger. So get into Ford Truck Month, Texas, and see what a built Ford Tough truck can do for you. There's a great selection in stock. Drive a new Ford F-150 today with 0%, 0 down, and 0 payments for 90 days plus complimentary maintenance. See your best in Texas Ford dealer.
What's his deal? Oh, him? He just got cash back shopping with Rackadin. Oh, I know the feeling. Cash back's where it's at. I just never dance in public. where that road leads. Take on any challenge. When you have the number one brand in dependability, you stop thinking about what you can't do and start doing what you never thought possible. Kia, movement that inspires. Brad Rudis is the new pitcher for Texas A&M. As he takes the mound, the pitching change brought to you tonight by Honda. So the Aggies will bring yet another pitcher on to try to slow down the Red Raiders. Rudis becomes the fourth Aggie pitcher tonight. Six foot, 195 pound sophomore out of Madisonville, Texas. Look at his third appearance of the season. See the stat line there, pretty clean. Two strikeouts, three walks, three hits, and then three to two thirds innings. You know, this is one of those games where before it's all said and done, you're going to empty the bench out. <laughs> They're going to try. Yeah, everybody's going to have a good time. Tech bullpen has been thinned out quite a bit. A lot of depth with both of these pitching staffs and a lot of great arms. So Hudson White is going to lead it off for the Red Raiders. Good okay, look at Tim Tadlock. Both of these teams locked into a 2 2 tie here in the bottom of the 10th, and one swing can win it. So Hudson White, who's 0 for 4 tonight to lead off the bottom of the 10th. The Tim Tad like a third base. That's the uh, sign for home run. <laughs> That's a strike on the outside corner from Rudis. I think he's been flashing that one now for a couple of innings. <laughs> Somebody end this thing. So White with a 1-1 count. Beautiful pitch by Rudy. A couple of good fastballs from the outside corner. So White down in the count one and two. That's ball outside, and it bounces away. There's the slider. Ruth's fastball slider changeup. White 0 for 4 in the ball game, still looking for his first hit. Fastball sits low 90s. Saw the two well-executed fastballs in the outside corner. 2-2 two -two is outside and low. From Rudis. You've been a pitcher. You've been in that situation. Are these guys just determined to keep the ball down and make you go down and get that ball? Yeah, that's the priority is uh, keep the ball down in the zone, try to keep the ball in the ballpark. But that's uh, the inability to spot those. Three, two, base hit in the left field. So right with his first hit of the night. And the Red Raiders have something going on. Let's we'll see if Tim Tadlock chooses to run for Hudson White. Great two-strike hitting here. We just tried to go back that fastball away. Hudson White says, no, I've seen a couple of those already. Deposit that in the left field. Two-strike swing yeah. approach. Really good at that. So Rudis now. To face Carter. He's going to try to butt it, and it's going to be a foul ball. 
Dylan Carter. Carter stabbed at that button. Attempt. You know, we have 19 total walks in this game. Do both teams combined. What's, what's so incredible, Butch, is that we're in a 2-2 game with 19 walks. How does that happen? <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> you'd think it would be a lot more than that. We're going to be setting a record here and keep walking, guys, with this score. Base runner was on the move as Rudis delivers, and it's fouled away by Carter. That was a high-risk play. And a hit and run there by Tim Tadlock. Nixon White, obviously not known for his speed on the base pass, but successful hit and run now. A couple of strikes on Carter. Pitch is outside. So the 0-2 count, and that's the first ball. So make it one and two. Well, Rudis hit his spot, but you saw Hank Bard sit up well outside. Throw back to first. So White gets his lead at first. And the one-two delivery from Rudis. Swung on and fouled off into the seats on the left side. Carter just a little late on that. Well, as a hitter in this situation, you don't want to be early in the breaking game. You know, try to stay back as long as you can. It's going to be late on the fastball, but I want to get out ahead of that breaking pitch. After a breaking ball just missed. Going to push the count to 2 2 now. on the scoreboard, 88 mile an hour fastball. They definitely got to buy Carter. <laughs> 33, Ryan Brown coming on to pinch hit now for Burns. So Ryan Brown is the new hitter. And Tadlock dipping into his roster. Likes that left-handed matchup against Rudis. They're trying to keep White close over there at first base. Gets to Brome as a strike. Call on the outside corner. Hudson White not known for his wheels, but he is one for one on stolen base attempts, so got that going for him. Oh one delivery. Swung on, popped up in the left field. Coming on his kick. He puts it away, and that is the second out in the inning. So that'll bring us back to the top of the lineup, and Rudis will face Hester. Nolan Hester. Strikes him off with a strike. A great command of the fastball by Rudis. He's really spotted those fastballs well tonight. So 
So the 0-1 delivery is low. Make it one and one to Hester. Hester with two hits and a walk tonight from his leadoff spot. So the 2-1 delivery. Hit hard and boom, for a base hit in the right field. Hester slipped going around second, or he might have gone to third. He tried to, lost his footing a little bit, and he had to go back. Yeah, that was quite, coming around second base, for exactly right. Yeah. He stumbled, coming around the bag, and had to hold up. Looked like he would have had third base easy. Yeah, Hester with the base hit in the right, and then White, he was coming all the way, and as he went to ground that bag, kind of lost his footing and had to scramble back. Yeah, smart play when you make that stumble. You certainly don't want to try to force it to third and get thrown out there for the third out. Gage Harrelson now steps into the batter's box for the Red Raiders. Pitch is low. Hester hit that ball hard. I oh, did. He got through the infield quick. Hester's third hit of the night. So Harrison takes it outside. That makes it 2-0 to count. Fourth time in a row that Hester has reached. And the Red Raiders with a single could win this game. So Harrelson with the ball that's low, showing a lot of discipline at the plate. You know, sometimes you get a runner in scoring position and you want to try to hit everything, but he's doing a great job of being patient. And he certainly is. That get to this stage of the game, and everybody wants to be the hero, but. That good discipline at the plate she makes a difference. There's the first strike. Beautiful pitch. Belt high inside. Yeah, I think if he's Rudis is gonna come right after Gage Harrelson. Harrelson 0 for 4 tonight, has a walk. Oh, got a big pitch to hit. Big pitch that he fouled off, yeah. and the count goes to 3-2. Right down central. Well, the Red Raider runners will be in motion here. The ball that gets to the infield definitely would be game over. The payoff pitch. 3 2 count to Harrelson. Inside ball four. Great discipline by Gage Harrelson. We've seen 13 walks from the Red Raiders. We've got seven walks from the Aggie pitching staff. 20. And Yeski has won a pass from that duck <laughs> to the mound. Not yet again. It's a big moment. You, you definitely want your pitcher to take some deep breaths here and refocus. But Give your fielders a chance here. Yeah, this is a big spot for Kevin Bissell. He'll be the next batter up for Texas Tech and an opportunity for him to do some damage. He had a base hit earlier, base hit and a walk. He's one for four on the night. Well, actually, he had one for four with that walk. The other thing Rudis has to be careful of is how to bury a breaking ball down. I mean, Bart's been really good behind the plate, but can't take that chance. First pitch to Gazelle, strike called on the outside. A nice slider. Open things up here against Gazelle. That's the pitch he wants to get Gazelle out with. That's a tough pitch to hit. Tough pitch anytime, but in this situation, it's really tough. 
So Rudis. Strike two. And that time gets the front door slider on Brazil. So two strikes and Brazil hasn't gotten the bat off the shoulder yet. And they need to throw a fastball to Brazil here. This one is hit on the ground. It goes to the shortstop. He goes over to second base, does Haas, and that takes us out of the inning. So guess what, Pat? We're on our way to the 11th. Base is loaded. We come back in a 2-2 game. Moderate to severe eczema still disrupts my skin. Despite treatment, it disrupts my skin with itch. It disrupts my skin with rash. But now, I can disrupt eczema with Rinvoke. Rinvoke is not a steroid, topical, or injection. It's one pill once a day. Many taking Rinvoke saw clear or almost clear skin, while some saw up to 100% clear skin. And they felt dramatic and fast itch relief, some as early as two days. That's Rinvoke relief. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attacks, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Disrupt the itch and rash of eczema. Talk to your doctor about Rinvoke. Learn how Abby can help you save. When you're looking for a new SUV, don't settle for some tired old design. For the freshest SUVs on the road, it has to be Honda. Honda SUVs are bolder and more beautiful than ever, including Ridgeline, Passport, HRV, the all new CRV, and the totally redesigned Honda Pilot, the biggest, most powerful Honda SUV ever, with more room inside so you can do more outside. So for the freshest SUVs on the road, see your greater Houston Honda dealer today. Welcome back to the finale in the Shriners Children's College Classic. And we're going out with the bang. <laughs> Take a look at the time. 10.58. That is central time, folks. These teams are acting like we have nothing to do tomorrow. <laughs> what he wants to win. Man, 16 runners left on base for Texas Tech. How about 14 for the Texas Aggies? Yeah, we have the total pitches for the game. Texas Tech pitchers. 185 pitches. That's a ball outside. And then to AM, 197. A total of 382 pitches thrown tonight. So Jack Moss is at the plate for the Aggies. Takes ball two outside. It looks like we like to say in baseball, we don't get paid for overtime. <laughs> Unless you're Ernie Banks, man. Let's play two. Let's play two. <laughs> Pitches a strike to Moss. Oh, just catches the outside, and Moss certainly didn't think so. Jim Schlossnagel said to Jack Moss, if he doesn't swing at it, it's not a strike. He fouled that one off. Count now even at two and two. He's got one of the best eyes of any player he has ever coached. His plate discipline is extraordinary. So the 2-2 two -two offer is outside. Make it 3-2. So the payoff pitch. This one is hit hard to center. Center fielder on the run makes the catch as Dylan Carter does a good job of tracking that one down. Yeah, that was outstanding catch. Just a great pass to the ball by Dylan Carter out center field. He started back, thought that ball might have some carry on it. And quickly changed directions and came in to make a nice run and catch. Great job by the Tech center fielder. So Travis uh, Chestnut now coming to the plate. A swing and a miss. Travis Chestnut, a utility infielder. A junior transfer.
And that one got away. Making a one-two count. Chestnut came in and run for Austin Boast back in the ninth inning. Two-two count now. with the foul ball straight back. So Kyle Robinson looks like he's starting to settle down a little bit on the mound. Yeah, still mid 90s fastball, that great big break and curveball. Looking solid so far. Swing and a miss. And a strikeout for big Kyle Robinson. And the second time we see Robinson use that changeup to get a strikeout. It's a nasty pitch. Starts out in the zone. This drops down out of it. Just gonna swing it right over the top and out front. Ryan Targotch coming to the plate now for the Aggies. into a double play in the first. He did have a walk, but he's 0 for 4 for the game. Swing and a miss. Another good changeup. Boy, Robinson pulled a string with that pitch. And that is a great equalizer in baseball, a straight changeup. Bases empty for Targotch. And that was very close. Two balls, one strike, two outs in the inning. We are in the top of the 11th. That's low. The ball three. This one is fouled off. Make it three, two. Got that one high and back into the seats down the left side. Another souvenir delivered. Good battle by Robinson Targot here. Just down off a couple of tough fastballs up in the zone. And we'll keep this at bat alive. And loses him. Payoff is outside for ball four. So Ryan Targot gets the free pass and he heads to first. twice tonight and that's a ball high 0 for 2 with two walks excuse me make that three walks the Red Raiders have pitched around him a couple of times tonight swing and miss by one he went upstairs for that one that is six on that fastball. Pitch and he swing and a miss. Pull the string on that one. And Robinson's got all three pitches working. Making life difficult on these Aggie hitters. That he is with a one-two count to Warner. Tosses to first. And Targotch is back. No problems there. Just in case he was thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Lulling everybody to sleep. Yep. Yeah. You know, I'm still here. 
<laughs> Robinson delivers. Swung on and it's hit high to center field. Coming hard is Carter and he puts it away. And the top of the 11th is history. We're still tied at two. So it all started when I was at a friend's party. Mia, please send me that. Sure. Everyone keeps asking. Mia, what are you doing? Even my French neighbor. Mia. Green light. I mean, all the time. Black light. Can you send me that? I'm not making this up. Hey, can you send me that? Everyone. Sure. The reviews are in, and everyone loves Season Pass from TXU Energy. 50% off your energy charges all winter and summer. What's not to love? I saved $450 last year. Half off for half the year is a real crowd pleaser. Even when the weather's changing, I'm still saving. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. You can say that again. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. I didn't mean literally. TXU Energy. Energy for everything. Welcome back to Minute Maid Park. Uh, we are playing the finale of the Shriners Children's College Classic. And as Ernie Banks once said, let's play two. Well, we're getting there. We're getting close <laughs> to that area. A statistician Bill Cousins says, do you really want to do that? <laughs> Bill said, I'm here for the duration, no matter what you guys have going on. Well, what a game. Well, some faithful fans stay in the... McGar. Stay in the light there. Leading off, second baseman. Yes, he did. That was a strike. Oh, great pitch. He wants the, from, wants the third base umpire to weigh in. It is a strike. Kate McGarth, number eight. Two check swings in a row. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. Lutus low and inside. Two two counts. So McGarth. McGarth leading off as a pinch hitter here in the bottom of the 11th. This time he fouls it out. So Rudis has come on and done a great job out of the bullpen. Swing and a miss. How about that one? Yeah, good breaking ball from Rudis. And... He's looking sharp. Starts the inning off with a strikeout. A couple of strikeouts here to end a third of work. There's a backdoor breaking ball. Gets McGar to start this 11th. Coleman up now. Ty Coleman at the plate. He's 0 for 4 with a walk. Had two strikeouts. Oh, two count to start this at bat. Well, you can well pitch game by both teams. Here. Trying to get a sense of it. it's going to be just a, a mistake that one of these pitchers makes. If one of these hitters is going to fail up. 
It's so tough stringing hits together in this game. And well, and, and you, you're getting deeper and deeper into what you have on the bench. If we go, we may see a position player on the mound here pretty soon. <laughs> Plenty of arms left, but uh, it is getting interesting. Line drive base hit in the right center field. So a nice job by Coleman. Struck that one into the outfield for a base hit. And a good piece of two-strike hitting from Coleman there. And he will give way to a pitch runner, but I just went with that pitch. Nicely done. Fastball down and away. So we'll have a pinch runner come on. It'll be number seven, Jarek Curtis, on the pinch run for the Red Raiders. Yeah, we're going to have a pitching change here. Jim Schlossnagel out to the mound. Taking that slow yeah. walk. Yep. Of course, the pitch, pitch runner is from Cypress, Texas, Jarek Curtis. Went to Tom Ball Memorial. Now a head coach goes out. He gets the ball in the Pitchcom wristband. <laughs> going to give up both of those things before you leave. But Rudis, good job by him. He did a great job. Well, he likes to give up his third hit. But pitched well. A couple of strikeouts and a walk in his outing. We'll be right back. When you're looking for a new SUV, don't settle for some tired old design. For the freshest SUVs on the road, it has to be Honda. Honda SUVs are bolder and more beautiful than ever, including Ridgeline, Passport, HRV, the all new CRV, and the totally redesigned Honda Pilot, the biggest, most powerful Honda SUV ever, with more room inside so you can do more outside. So for the freshest SUVs on the road, see your greater Houston Honda dealer today. As the H-E-B Bullmaster, I always get excited for the season because it's the most wonderful time of year for crawfish. And at H-E-B, we sell more crawfish in Texas than anyone. We're talking big, fresh, live Louisiana crawfish. Plus, with our in-store boils, we do the prepping, spicing, and cooking. So you can just pinch, pull, and be merry. H-E-B. Here, crawfish season is better. A promise is a trust not to be broken. I say your name. Whether spoken with an oath. Do you solemnly swear. It's your first day. You know I got your back, right? Or seal with a pinky. In 1922, a group of soldiers launched USAA with a promise to take care of their own. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission. Always. And we have another pitching change brought to you tonight by Honda. It's Evan Oshenbeck coming out of the bullpen for the Aggies, the left-hander from Brenham, Texas. Spent some time at Blinn Junior College. Yeah, 6'2", 220-pound right left-hander for the Aggies. Becomes the fifth pitcher of the night for the Ags. Making his third appearance of the season. He has gone six of the third innings, given up seven hits, a couple of earned runs, one walk, six strikeouts. Brutus giving way to Oshenbeck. The Red Raider at first base. That's Jared Curtis. He just came in to run. Curtis over there running for Coleman, who got that base hit in the right. Standing on deck is uh, Cash coming up to the plate now. Well, these Aggies, so they're honoring the Corps of Cadets with their this new version of their uniforms. They just broke it out last week. We're getting to wear these uniforms for a long time tonight, Butch. Yeah. Here, show them off. That's a good thing. You can buy a lot of them at the bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> so Gavin Cash steps up for the Red Raiders. And the first throw from Ashen Beck goes to first base. He's keeping an eye on Curtis over there. We 
He's back to first base again. Curtis always a threat to run. Has no attempts this year. Stolen base department. So the pitch to Cash finally comes in and he fouls it out. And Cash was upset with himself. Got a good pitch to hit. He did. He was up. And he just barely missed it. Out over the plate. See his reaction to it. So another throw to first base. Well, Tim Tadlock, you sure would like to have Curtis in scoring position. Try to avoid a double play situation. Good long look at first. Comes to the plate with it and is hit. High into the air, but deep into left field and back. And a nice catch on the play over there by the left fielder. Wow. That is Kent, Caden Kent, who's an infielder by trade. Yeah. Going deep down, back into the outfield and making a great catch. Just a great athletic player overall, but uh, tremendous catch. We've talked about the nuances here at Minute Maid Park, and we have to negotiate that left center wall, that couple of pillars that stick out there in front of the bullpen. You get into that warning track, you start to get a sense that you may run into one of those pillars, but Caden Kent does a nice job of getting back and making a leaping catch. Yeah, that ball was well hit. Yeah, that, you didn't catch that, that's ball game. So two down now. I think Curtis scores from first base if that ball drops. I think you're right, sir. Hudson White at the plate now for the Red Raiders. Curtis still at first, the pinch runner. Good cut. Strike one to White. hit his last time up. And the Aggie defense have taken a couple of steps back. They have played no doubles in the outfield. And there he goes. And he couldn't get the throw away. So a good jump over there by Curtis. But the first baseman, Jack Moss, looked like it got stuck in his glove. Yeah, sure did. Just couldn't get the handle of it. He's waiting for uh, Targoch to get to second base. I think you're right. Just could not get the feel for that ball. There's Targoch making the step inside the bag there. Yeah, he's got Hudson White pulled over towards the left side. But now Targoch gets back to his regular position. Ball is low. Yeah. Got one up on the swing, though. The strike. And at the first base, the umpire he jumped on it. Yeah, he, went around. he got the point. <laughs> he said, yes, sir. So that's going to bring up an 0-2 count to Hudson White. Another pitch in the dirt. And White wasn't fishing for it that time. And Hank Bard just continues to be a wall behind the dish for the Aggies. And this gives uh, great confidence to your pitchers to be able to bear that breaking ball. Outfield has come in just a little bit for the Aggies. Oshendek set to deliver the one-two count. And it's fouled off by White. <laughs> Back towards the on-deck circle. His teammate Dylan Carter taking cover in there. <laughs> oh, 
good battle here between Austin Beck and Hudson White. The one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. And a strikeout by Austin Beck. I tell you what, both teams have been threatening, but no one can push that final run across. We'll be right back. Top of the 12. You ain't seen this nothing. is Ford Truck Month, Texas. Time to get up and get into Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight, including Ford F-150 and the all-new Ford Super Duty. Or check out Ford Maverick and Ford Ranger. So get into Ford Truck Month, Texas, and see what a built Ford Tough truck can do for you. There's a great selection in stock. Drive a new Ford F-150 today with 0%, 0 down, and 0 payments for 90 days plus complimentary maintenance. See your best in Texas Ford dealer. What's his deal? Oh, him? He just got cash back shopping with Rackett in. Oh, I know the feeling. Cash back's where it's at. I just never dance in public. Huh? Find out where that road leads. Take on any challenge. When you have the number one brand in dependability, you stop thinking about what you can't do and start doing what you never thought possible. Kia, movement that inspires. Top of the 12, and the Aggies and the Red Raiders are still fighting it out. We have a 2-2 game here at Minute Maid Park in the finale of the Shriners Children's College Classic. And my friend here, Pat Combs, has done every last one of these games. <laughs> Man, I'm still fired up, Butch. This is uh, this is a great way to end the tournament. I mean, just an incredible battle between these two teams. And Robinson, I think, is trying to get a start out of this uh, relief appearance. <laughs> He's been good. He's been really good. Yeah, he has. Really good stuff tonight. Chase Lavulette will lead it off for the Aggies. Swing and a miss. Starts him off with a strike. Yeah, how about a change up first pitch? Boy, well, he has just got the, that three pitch mix working really well. He has commanded all three tonight. Ball one on the outside. Lobulet, Jordan Thompson, and Bard are listed to come up in this inning. Another ball. Now you're looking at a two and one count. So the Red Raiders have pushed the count all the way to three and one. And that's a strike right there on the outside corner. Just catches the outside. So Kyle Robinson with a 3-2 offering, and it's five away. Which have been a lot of baseball games. I've, I've seen a lot of baseball. I've never seen a game going to the 12th inning and not one extra base hit by either team. Or with this many walks. Yeah, a lot of walks. Yeah. Right? We talked about that. And then... 3-2 uh, pitch. On the outside, did not get across, so that's ball four for Lavulette as he goes down to first base. And 14 left on base by Texas A&M. 17 left on base by the Red Raiders. This is a game of attrition at this point. <laughs> so Jordan Thompson will be the next batter for the Aggies. With the leadoff man on first. Robinson checking 
Lavalette at first base, but also trying to see if Jordan Thompson would tip his hand on a butt attempt, and he did not. He did not. He did a great line. He's out of the dugout, and looks like he may be signaling for. Nope, maybe not. He might be signaling for a new pitcher, but I think he's signaling for his infield to come in. See how they're going to uh, defend possible attempt by Thompson. Well, that was a very good point you just made about the not tipping off the butt. Baseball is a game of nuances, and like you can give things away, and he did a great job of not sure. So now they don't know anything at this point. You're That's the same right. butt. Yeah. I think a good chance by Tadlock to set his defense, just remind his guys, hey, if they do show it, here's what we're going to do. He's now got Fazell, his third baseman, in the grass. But Tadlock thinks something is coming. He comes in at third, and this one is swung on and driven to straightaway center field. It's going to hang up for Carter, and he puts it away. And Rob Ulett will have to hustle back to first base. So that is the first out of the inning. Yeah, not a ton of small ball tonight either. It's uh, a lot of runners and leadoff runners on base. Not a lot of butt attempts. Number three is Caden Kent. Stepping up to the plate. And that is a foul ball. That was a good pitch to hit. Got a fastball right over the plate. So Kent down, one strike in the count. Pitch on, hit hard to second, could be two. Go to second for one, back to first, and it's in time for the double play. So the Red Raiders pull off another double play. We're still tied at two as we head to the bottom of the 12th. Stick around, folks. Moderate to severe eczema still disrupts my skin. Despite treatment, it disrupts my skin with itch. It disrupts my skin with rash. But now, I can disrupt eczema with Rinvoke. Rinvoke is not a steroid, topical, or injection. It's one pill once a day. Many taking Rinvoke saw clear or almost clear skin, while some saw up to 100% clear skin. And they felt dramatic and fast itch relief, some as early as two days. That's Rinvoke relief. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attacks, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Disrupt the itch and rash of eczema. Talk to your doctor about Rinvoke. Learn how AbbVie can help you save. When you're looking for a new SUV, don't settle for some tired old design. For the freshest SUVs on the road, it has to be Honda. Honda SUVs are bolder and more beautiful than ever, including Ridgeline, Passport, HRV, the all new CRV, and the totally redesigned Honda Pilot, the biggest, most powerful Honda SUV ever, with more room inside so you can do more outside. So for the freshest SUVs on the road, see your greater Houston Honda dealer today. It has been a great weekend for Shriners, and you can help provide life-changing care to children who need your help by logging on to collegeclassic.org. And for a $100 donation, for a $100 donation, you get a free Marucci bat, a mini bat. But if you want to go big time, give $250 or more, then you get the full-size Marucci bat. So go to collegeclassic.org and donate today. It's a beautiful bat. There it is. And yeah, just a minute ago, we saw the Red Raiders doing a rally dance. There it is. They're out there in the bullpen getting fired up. Just trying to stay loose. Let's get ready in case their name is called. So Dylan Carter. 
at the plate in the bottom of the 12th. Game tied at two. Carter hits a foul ball down the right side. So the pitch to Carter is outside. Pitch there by Evan Oshenbeck. Yeah, he's in a spot there. I saw Hank Bard sit up outside corner. And he just faced the blow. So coming into the plate now is Tracer Lopez, number three. He starts him out with the ball. Lopez started the Aggies' first game against Rice in the series. The 0-2 delivery, excuse me, the 2-0 delivery, and Tracer Lopez, freshman from Rosebud, Texas. Three balls and one strike. Three balls, no strike, excuse me. And that's a strike. Just a little bit ahead of myself. It was coming. <laughs> Pitch to Lopez and he fouls it off. Tracer Lopez, one of those reclassified freshmen. In the early to Texas Tech. Yeah. We look at it. Solid defensive shortstop. Hassan back right on the black. Another call strike. Yeah, two in a row, same spot. Just an instant replay from the Dylan Carter experience. <laughs> the Dylan Carter experience. <laughs> That'll bring up Nolan Hester. With two gone in the bottom of the 12. First pitch is going to be a strike from Oshinbeck. 11.30 p.m., which we start making stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> Offering to Hester, strike two. Oshenbeck says, I mean, he's, apparently he's got somewhere to go. He is locked into that yes. outside corner against these left-handers. Couple of really nice pitches there. He rocks and delivers the 0-2, and it's a ball. The lefties look sharp this yeah, evening. Sure has. Great command of that fastball. Just missed. That was very close on the outside, but it's a ball. 2-2 Two -two count now to Nolan Hester. How about the draw that this uh, Texas Tech team got for the tournament? Game start time. They had two morning games, Friday and Saturday. This is up the middle. The throw over is in time for the out. So we will go now to the 13th as the Texas A&M Aggies come to the plate. All tied 2-2 game here at Minute Maid Park.
So it all started when I was at a friend's party. Mia, please send me that. Sure. Everyone keeps asking. Mia, can you send me this? Even my French neighbor. Mia. Green ball. I mean, all the time. Red light. Can you send me that? I'm not making this up. Hey, can you send me that? Everyone. Sure. The reviews are in, and everyone loves Season Pass from TXU Energy. 50% off your energy charges all winter and summer. What's not to love? I saved $450 last year. Half off for half the year is a real crowd pleaser. Even when the weather's changing, I'm still saving. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. You can say that again. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. I didn't mean literally. TXU Energy. Energy for everything. Welcome back to Minute Maid Park, everyone. We have Texas A&M and Texas Tech all tied at two apiece as we move into the top of the 13th. Ten hits tonight for the Red Raiders. Five hits for Texas A&M with just one error. And we will have Hank Bard leading it off for the Fight Naggies here in the top of the 13th. Well, Bush, the Aggies have not had a hit since the fifth inning. They tied the game up in the ninth. It was four walks issued in the inning by Damian Bravo. They have gone hitless. This one is hit into the gap in left center, giving chase, and it will be caught out there by Hester. So Hester had that one all the way, but that was a good retreat to put that one away to retire Bard. The Aggies have gone hitless in the last six innings and Bard gave it a ride with that gap. The ball's about 15 feet. If no one Hester's left. It might be up against that Crawford wall, but hit the wrong spot. So that will bring up number two, Hunter Haas, the leadoff hitter for the Aggies. Starts him out with the ball. This one is hit to short. And the throw to first base by Tracer Lopez is in time to nip Hunter Hawks. So that's two down here in the 13th. 6-3 on the put -in. Now you get the good understanding of why they used the ghost run in the major leagues. <laughs> they put the runner at second base in extra innings. I love the back and forth here, but... Uh, All the games that go into the 13th, 14th, 15th inning, you start to think, man, somebody push a run across here. Jack Moss at the plate for Texas A&M. This was hit hard to straightaway center. But that's going to be caught right there by Dylan Carter. And that retires the side in the top of the 13th. So Texas Tech coming to bat with another opportunity to win the ball game. We'll be right back. When you're looking for a new SUV, don't settle for some tired old design. For the freshest SUVs on the road, it has to be Honda. Honda SUVs are bolder and more beautiful than ever, including Ridgeline, Passport, HRV, the all new CRV, and the totally redesigned Honda Pilot, the biggest, most powerful Honda SUV ever, with more room inside so you can do more outside. So for the freshest SUVs on the road, see your greater Houston Honda dealer today. The H-E-B Bullmaster, I always get excited for the season because it's the most wonderful time of year for crawfish. And at H-E-B, we sell more crawfish in Texas than anyone. We're talking big, fresh, live Louisiana crawfish. Plus, with our in-store boils, we do the prepping, spicing, and cooking. So you can just pinch, pull, and be merry. H-E-B. Here, crawfish season is better. Promises of trust not to be broken. I say your name. Whether spoken with an oath. Do you solemnly swear. It's your first day. You know I got your back, right? Or seal with a pinky. 
In 1922, a group of soldiers launched USAA with a promise to take care of their own. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission, always. Bottom of the 13th coming up here at Minute Maid Park. If you're just joining us, we're in the finale of the Shriners Children's College Classic at Minute Maid Park in Texas A&M and Texas Tech are locked in quite the duel. I've got a solution for this. In a tournament, you got to put a three-and-a-half-hour time limit on the game. So you can have a tie in a, in a tournament game. That's that's more than enough time there. I'm thinking about the welfare of the kids. they got to get back <laughs> to school tomorrow. That's right. A lot of kids in here tonight. So Harrelson leads it off, and he's down 0-2 on the count. That is Gage Harrelson. Lead off batter here in the bottom of the 13th. He bounces one on the infield. It's going to be a coming in Haas quickly. And he throws to first base and makes the play. Wow, what a play by Hunter, Hunter Haas. Haas. Man. We talked about his defensive capabilities, and he showed you just a little bit of it right there. You know, watch the uh, move across the infield and come across the second base side of the bag. And just a quick transfer and throw. Barely nips Gage Harrelson. Outstanding play by Hunter Haas. Swing and a miss. Kevin Bazell now up for the Red Raiders. This time he hits one high to center field. Jordan Thompson is there. He puts it away easily. Second out of the inning. I wonder when he's uh, seventh at bats now for Texas Tech. Has a line up over seven times. I wonder if the bats are starting to get heavy because we're seeing uh, some not so good swings here in this late stage of the game. Cade McGar. At the plate, struck out his first time tonight. Faked the bunt, took a strike. McGar with a swing and a miss. Good break the ball that time from Washington. Has really controlled the outside part of that plate against these Red Raider left handers really well. That looked very close, just yeah, missed. Just missed. So the one two pitch is outside, make it 2 2. Washington tried to. Drop down that time and throw the slider. Oh, caught him looking. What a pitch by Evan Ostenbeck. And half his teammates come out on the field to greet him, and why not? What a pitch. Well, we go to the 14th. <laughs> Still tied. This is Ford Truck Month, Texas. Time to get up and get into Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight, including Ford F-150 and the all-new Ford Super Duty. Or check out Ford Maverick and Ford Ranger. So get into Ford Truck Month, Texas, and see what a built Ford Tough truck can do for you. There's a great selection in stock. Drive a new Ford F-150 today with 0%, 0 down, and 0 payments for 90 days plus complimentary maintenance. See your best in Texas Ford dealer. What's his deal? Oh, him? He just got cash back shopping with Rackett in. Oh, I know the feeling. Cash back's where it's at. I just never dance in public. Mm -hmm. Find out 
where that road leads. Take on any challenge. When you have the number one brand in dependability, you stop thinking about what you can't do and start doing what you never thought possible. Kia, movement that inspires. <laughs> we're actually bringing disco back. Top of the 14th, and we're tied at two. Texas A&M and Texas Tech. Why not make them some dance moves as we uh, head to the 14th? Travis Chestnut leading it off, and he wraps one into center field. And it's going to be caught by Dylan Carter as he puts that away, and it's the first out of the inning. So Kyle Robinson, you know, I tell you what, he's been around a while now. Ted? Yeah, four innings of work. <laughs> he hasn't made a start out of this. Yeah, three walks, three strikeouts, but uh, has yet to give up a base hit. He's been lights out for the Red Raiders. Last hit given up was back in the fifth inning by Tech. And that will make it an 0-2 count. All right, From Ryan Targot. Go to the fifth inning. He gave up, what, five hits. And if you go to the 14th and complete it, does it count as a no-hitter? It's not any a no-hit ball, right? So He'll take it. <laughs> Targot is a strikeout victim as he goes down. That will bring up Trevor Warner with uh, two down here in the top of the 14th. Starts him out with a strike. Robinson brings it on, swung on and fouled away and the bullpen play tonight has been outstanding on both sides. Yeah, both both sides have been great, and they, they had to be. And no room for error on either side. And, and the count and every pitch means something. These guys have been absolutely incredible. Boy, Robinson strikes out another one right there. Struck out the last two, and that's it for the top of the 14th. We go to the bottom of the frame, still tied at two. Moderate to severe eczema still disrupts my skin. Despite treatment, it disrupts my skin with itch. It disrupts my skin with rash. But now, I can disrupt eczema with Rinvoke. Rinvoke is not a steroid, topical, or injection. It's one pill once a day. Many taking Rinvoke saw clear or almost clear skin, while some saw up to 100% clear skin. And they felt dramatic and fast itch relief, some as early as two days. That's Rinvoke relief. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attacks, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Disrupt the itch and rash of eczema. Talk to your doctor about Rinvoke. Learn how Abby can help you save. When you're looking for a new SUV, don't settle for some tired old design. For the freshest SUVs on the road, it has to be Honda. Honda SUVs are bolder and more beautiful than ever, including Ridgeline, Passport, HRV, the all new CRV, and the totally redesigned Honda Pilot, the biggest, most powerful Honda SUV ever, with more room inside so you can do more outside. So for the freshest SUVs on the road, see your greater Houston Honda dealer today. <laughs> Thank you for staying up late with us, everyone. We are now moving to the bottom of the 14th. Locked in a 2-2 game here between the Aggies and the Red Raiders. And we mentioned it right before we went to break. Uh, we've seen some outstanding pitching coming out of the bullpen from both sides. These two teams have been just great. And so Jarek Curtis... Jarek Curtis, who came on to pitch run, actually stole a base will now get a chance to get in that bat. 
Came on for Coleman. Swung on, bounced down to third. Plays it on a hop. Over the first, and it's in time. A good play over there by Warner. I yeah, wasn't sure with the ball, if the battle was going to stay fair or not. And Warner picked it up and fired it across the diamond. Strong throw to first baseman Jack Moss. Yeah, it did stay fair. Yeah, good gun. Just gets Jarrett Curtis. Curtis goes out 5 3. So that will bring up Cash, and wow. We're talking about swinging out of your shoes. <laughs> He was trying to send us all home. Gavin Cash. See, boys, I'm getting tired. I'm going to swing out of my shoes. That's a ball. Look at it. <laughs> Boy, that's a good rip. <laughs> Cash scored their second run of the game for the Red Raiders. At the time, it gave them a 2-1 to one lead. Well, they're trying to figure out the uh, back of the, the box. We have lost the box. <laughs> that tends to happen when you go 14 innings. What box? What are you talking about? <laughs> There's no box. So Cash regroups at a 1-1 offering. This one is hit on the ground to first base. And it will be taken unassisted by Jack Moss. And that is the second out of the inning. I think Cash, he's either hurting so bad or so tired he can't run to first base, but well, he may have hurt that ankle again. He's swinging and missing it. Mean, he's pretty upset. So Hudson White will step it to the plate for the Red Raiders. Evan Oshenbeck delivers. Ball gets away from the catcher there. Ball one. And I think some of the fans have taken your advice. It looks like a couple of people left. They have to get, you have to get your kids to school tomorrow. Swing and a miss by Hudson White. Well, there are some faithful fans still here, though. Let's see a few uh, small kids running around. It's, it's a school night. <laughs> Foul off there. Hudson White has had a nice night. Had a base hit earlier. Oh, that's a down into the dirt, and they're going to ask the first place umpire. Yeah, Michael Grantis says, nope. and his ball two held up. Yeah, how about the game for Hudson White? Still catching here in the 14th. He's had six at bats. And he's going to catch two games tonight. Yeah, I, I think he might get the day off the next game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> think? <laughs> that could be a nice bath big enough for this guy. So the count goes full to Hudson White. White swings and he misses. A strikeout for Evan Oshenbeck. Wow, well, we're going to go. To the 15th. Yes, sir. Still tied at two. started when I was at a friend's party. Mia, can you send me that? Sure. Everyone keeps asking. Mia, can you send me that? Even my French neighbor. Mia! Green ball! I'm 
mean all the time. Can you send me that? I'm not making this up. Hey, can you send me that? Everyone. Sure. The reviews are in, and everyone loves Season Pass from TXU Energy. 50% off your energy charges all winter and summer. What's not to love? I saved $450 last year. Half off for half the year is a real crowd pleaser. Even when the weather's changing, I'm still saving. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. You can say that again. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. I didn't mean literally. TXU Energy. Energy for everything. Texas A&M and Texas Tech locked in a 2-2 game as we go to the top of the 15. The Aggies wearing their new uniforms tonight. And they're getting a lot of good reviews, I'm sure, during this 15th inning, inning game now as we head to the 15th. Yeah, really sharp looking uniforms. and Both teams put on a great show tonight. Both pitching staffs pitching unbelievably well but uh, how about Robinson Kyle Robinson for his sixth inning of work that guy's been really good he has not given up a hit he has walked three he's also struck out five Chase Lobulette at the plate swung on and missed Chase the high one and Robinson out of the pen now 65 pitches 39 strikes Swing and a miss. He's still pumping it up there. Yeah, he is. Going some heat. 93 on that fastball. This one is hit to second base, and it goes off the glove. That's going to go in for a base hit. Okay, yeah, the guard going to his left. And looked like he was... He had a place to make a play, but the ball skidded underneath his glove. That was hit hard by Bobby Lett. You're right, it looked like McGuire got there, but yeah. somehow did not get down on the ball. Step through there. Okay, there's a base hit. So Jace Lobulette is at first. Number 31, Jordan Thompson at the plate now for the Aggies. Now Tech defensively expecting a bunt. They've got Bazell pulled in at third base. There it is. He showed bunt right there. So Thompson came in earlier as a pinch hitter. There goes the runner, breaks for second base. This one is hit high in the left field, being chased, and it makes it to the seats. It's a foul ball. So Lobulette will have to track back to first base. And a nice save by the fans on Tracer Lopez. The Texas Tech shortstop diving into the stands, I think just to slow his momentum down. He's about ready to crash into that Shriners Children's Banner. That's yeah. The wall with the padding, but yeah, that ball did stay in. Tracer gave it 110 right there. Yeah, sure did. Nolan Hester pulled him back in. Good assist by his teammate and the fans. So Thompson now will reset with a 1-1 count. And that was a hit and run. You're right, Butch Laviolette was off and running. He was gone. He had it. Pitch is outside, make it two and one. Well, Thompson not showing butt there. He put the hit and run back on, two and one pitch. He'd get something to hit. Two one offering from Kyle Robinson, and he goes to first base. Diving back in is Jace Lavulette. Yeah, Coach Losh wants to get aggressive here. Put La Violette into motion and put Jordan Thompson try to find a hole. Trying to keep him close.
Pitch to Thompson is fouled away. Wow. Run off the mask of Hudson White. I don't know how he is still in the game. He just caught all 14 <laughs> innings. Unbelievable. And he's hopping around back there, too. Doesn't look much for the wear and tear. Yep. Pitch back to first. The throw goes to first. Chase is not straying too far from the base. Thompson is swinging a miss. Wow. The 2-2 two -two offering, and he could not connect. Yeah, Robinson came back with that slider, and it's... Uh, been a tremendous pitch. Boy, both off-speed pitches. The changeup's been good. The slider's been great. Caden Kent steps in now for the Aggies. One down and a runner at first. It just feels like Robinson can throw any of those three pitches at any time. Usually a pitcher has to kind of figure out What's not working tonight, but you're right, everything he's thrown yeah. up, he's got right where he wanted it. Well, a lot of confidence, and Aggies really can't sit on anything. Not a lot of good pitches to swing at. Jaden Kent, a swing and a miss. Who's it with that change up? To start the count with a strike. When Robinson is fouled away by Kent. <laughs> Throw back to first base. <laughs> Count now to Caden Kent. Longest game. The PA announcer just said it was 2017. Yeah, that's right. 15 innings. <laughs> well, we're there. <laughs> Robinson paid a lot of attention to. LaViolette over at first base. Oh, and two count. And that one's fouled off as we hit the five-hour mark in this ballgame. 12.05 a.m. There it is. First pitch was, what, 7.05? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yesterday? <laughs> This young man is pitching a whale of a game, man. He is, you know, when you're in the groove, you know how that feels. Oh, when man. In the zone. So the 0-2 delivery to Kent is fouled away. Okay, hang it tough. That was the 74th pitch from Kyle Robinson. Kent taking some good cuts. Count is 0-2. So he's staying alive, and that goes another throw to first base. So Kyle Robinson will reset. His 0-2 offering. Is hit right at the second baseman. Goes to the shortstop for one on the first for the four, six, three double play. And we are out of the inning and heading to the bottom of the 15th. Still tied at two apiece.
When you're looking for a new SUV, don't settle for some tired old design. For the freshest SUVs on the road, it has to be Honda. Honda SUVs are bolder and more beautiful than ever, including Ridgeline, Passport, HRV, the all new CRV, and the totally redesigned Honda Pilot, the biggest, most powerful Honda SUV ever, with more room inside so you can do more outside. So for the freshest SUVs on the road, see your greater Houston Honda dealer today. As the H-E-B Bowmaster, I always get excited for the season because it's the most wonderful time of year for crawfish. And at H-E-B, we sell more crawfish in Texas than anyone. We're talking big, fresh, live Louisiana crawfish. Plus, with our in-store boils, we do the prepping, spicing, and cooking. So you can just pinch, pull, and be merry. H-E-B. Here, crawfish season is better. A promise is a trust not to be broken. Whether spoken with an oath. Do solemnly swear. It's your first day. You know I got your back, right? Or seal with a pinky. In 1922, a group of soldiers launched USAA with a promise to take care of their own. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission. Always. Butch Alcindor and Pat Combs here at Minute Maid Park. We are a tie 2-2 between the Aggies and the Red Raiders. And somebody in this stadium has a sense of humor. They're playing wait until the midnight hour <laughs> on the PA system. That is the music we are hearing. Yeah, well, we did. Who sang that, Bill? I know you know the answer. We are Wilson Pickett. <laughs> there we go. We are past the midnight hour here in Houston. It is officially Monday morning. What about Monday morning baseball? the Triners Children's Classic. A Monday morning baseball in the bottom of the 15th. And that one is fouled away. That is Carter, Dylan Carter, at the plate for the Red Raiders. This was swung on, and it's a foul ball heading into the seats down the left field side. You know, we were looking at our scorecards here just a minute ago, and we, we, we all got a mess. I mean, it's yeah, just... Uh, I'm getting ready to pull out another one. <laughs> yeah. I only got 15 innings on my scorecard. I bet mean, the job Evan Oshenbeck has done. Another That's strikeout. a great pitch. Caught him looking. Dylan Carter was not looking for that. We have had a lot of frustrated hitters tonight. I think it's been a very consistent strike zone by Ron T. It has. Well, they maybe give it a couple inches on the outside corner at times. Yeah, but it's been both sides. I mean, been very consistent. Ball outside. Tracer Lopez now the batter for Texas Tech. Swing and a miss. Man, Oshenbeck, Oshenbeck just reaching back and letting it go. Yeah, he is matching the zeros that Kyle Robinson is putting up. Oshenbeck is into his fourth inning of work. Lopez got a piece of that one. He has yet to get up a hit. A little cleaner line. Six strikeouts, no walks for Oshenbeck. So, Lopez... Steps back in. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Took another one down. So another strikeout for Evan Oshenbeck. Take that three in a row for him. He's dealing. We'll go back to the top of the lineup now. And that'll be Nolan Hester. Hester's going to try to bunt his way on. Instead, he pops it up and goes over the screen. Yeah, why not? Trevor Warner playing way back at third base and just trying to get something going against Oshenbeck. Now four and a third innings of perfect ball. No walks, no hits. Hit hard at that time. Foul off by Hester. Hester. 
Well, folks are too tired to go chase it down. <laughs> Nobody's getting up to get the foul ball. <laughs> Either that or they are asleep already. <laughs> so the 0-2 offering is outside, make it ball one. You think Bobby Dynamite has went home, or is he still up there in that train? I, I haven't seen him in a while. He went home. That's a strike. Strike out. three called <laughs> on Hester. Get out the side. My goodness, Evan Oshenbeck getting the job done for the Aggies. We'll be right back all tied at two apiece. This is Ford Truck Month, Texas. Time to get up and get into Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight, including Ford F-150 and the all-new Ford Super Duty. Or check out Ford Maverick and Ford Ranger. So get into Ford Truck Month, Texas, and see what a built Ford Tough truck can do for you. There's a great selection in stock. Drive a new Ford F-150 today with 0%, 0 down, and 0 payments for 90 days plus complimentary maintenance. See your best-in-Texas Ford dealer. What's his deal? Oh, him? He just got cash back shopping with Rackett in. Oh, I know the feeling. Cash back's where it's at. I just never dance in public. Mm -hmm. Find out where that road leads. Take on any challenge. When you have the number one brand in dependability, you stop thinking about what you can't do and start doing what you never thought possible. Kia, movement that inspires. Welcome back to Minute Maid Park. Top of the 16th we go as the Aggies come to bat. We have a new pitcher in the game, number 38 for Texas Tech. That is Jacob Rogers. And pitching change tonight has been presented by Honda as Jacob Rogers. The right-hander will be making his first appearance. Well, let me say first appearance tonight. <laughs> right? <laughs> And Rogers making his third appearance of the season. Giving up two hits in four innings. Four strikeouts and a walk. He is 1-0 in the season with a 2.25 earned run average. And they got everything they wanted and more from Kyle Robinson. No what a doubt. job he did tonight. No doubt about it. So Jacob Rogers comes on. His first pitch is a strike. That is to the catcher, Hank Bard, number 48. Swing and a miss, down 0-2 in the count. One thing about Rodgers, he's working really quickly on the mound. That's a ball high. Pitch on the way, and that was close one. Ball two. Yeah, that's what Wise said. Where was that? <laughs> in a conversation with Ron Teague. Home plate umpire. Rogers delivers, and it is blooped right into left field, and it falls for a base hit for the Aggies. So Bard with a blooper to left. Hester gets it back on the infield, but it's a base hit for Hank Bard. Yeah, first hit for the Aggies since the fifth inning. Here we are, the top of the 16th. 
So Hunter Haas would go back to the top of the lineup for the Yankees. Throw the first. Bard goes scrambling back. Yeah, Haas not showing bunt. Head over the head with the pitch, and Bard will go into second base. Wow. Well, don't need to sacrifice Bunt to move him. Now, if you're Hunter Hosh, you're thinking you've got to put something in play to the right side of the infield. Try to get Bard moved over to third base with less than two outs. We'll go down as a wild pitch. And now, Jim Schlossley will have a chat with Wants to have a his visit. leadoff hitter. Yeah. In the strategy session on how we want to get Bard moved over. I think if uh, you're Schloss, I think you let Hunter Haas swing it here. Yeah, if he can just bounce it to yeah. the right side. And he might be able to punch something through that, that right side. That was close. That's a great situational hitter. Yeah, over the top of his head. And I think you just trust Haas to execute. Of course, the uh, first baseman, Gavin Cash, pulled way in at first base for Tech. Board at second. Make it a strike. One and one is our count. That was a good job by Rogers for that fastball inside. So just in case Haas was trying to punch it to the right side. Oh, another one. He's lost it. Yeah. Count goes to two and one to Hunter Haas. There by Rogers. Yeah, good strike. He catches the stop of the strike zone. And let's see if Haas can execute. 2-2 two, two count now. Yeah, if you're Jacob Rogers, you're probably thinking fastball in. The delivery from Rogers is away. It's tapped. It's going to go to short, and he can't make the play at first. Everybody is safe. Hunter Haas beats the ref at first, and Bard moves over the third. So the Aggies have two runners aboard and no outs here in the top of the 16th inning. Yeah, it's a tremendous job by Hunter Haas. And, and put the ball in play, exactly what he needed to do there. And it would have been a really tough play for Tracer Lopez coming in from shortstop. So that ball just kind of skip off the back of the mound and hug the grass. And it's an error going to be called on Tracer Lopez. He had to hustle to get there in a hurry. Well, the Aggies have the go-ahead run at third base now. No out, so that's going to bring Tim Tadlock out of the dugout. I don't think there was anybody warming up in the Tech bullpen, so this is going to be more how do we want to set up our first and third defense. Now we get some activity. Looks like Brendan Lysick starting to get loose. I want get you to put on your manager hat here. Do you try to bunt it? That's going to be what they're going to try to defend because I think that's the exact right call. Jack Moss, you know, left-handed here. He's going to be able to see with Bazell's crashing at third. Gavin Cash has to hold the bag at first base. He's got to hold the runner Hunter Haas on. So if you're Moss, you try to bunt the ball to the right side. And that does two things. It potentially scores a run, but also gets Haas into the scoring position as well. It does. So that's the play for the Aggies. So Jack Moss versus Rogers. Ball away. Yeah, Moss not showing fun.
One and no count. And it's a strike. Make it one and one to Jack Moss. And a lot of trust and confidence in Jack Moss to handle this situation well. He knows what he's got to do. Put the ball in play and try to punch it through this infield or get a ball deep to the outfield. One and one offering goes to short. And he can't handle it as Lopez. It goes off of Lopez. And Bard comes in to score. That's going to be an error on Lopez. And Haas goes all the way to third. So the Aggies have just pushed across the lead run here in the top of the 16th. Oh, how about that? Wow. Another error, back-to-back -back errors. In a game in which the Red Raiders had been error-free for 15 innings. And Tracer Lopez makes his second of the inning. And that ball was slapped pretty hard off the bat of Moss, but definitely a ball that should have been right. caught. Yeah, right through the wickets. Almost like Lopez got caught in between him, getting his feet set, and possibly should have gone backhand to get that ball. Yeah, Lopez checked into this game late. Yeah, and went through his warm-ups really quickly out there on the field. And I, like you said, it's just unfortunate. That normally, he's such a good fielding yeah. shortstop. Really known for his defensive play. So the Aggies move out in front now. Three to two in the top of the 16th. Ball high and inside. Well, tech defense still set close to the grass. Lopez about three or four steps off of it at short. They cannot allow any more damage here. Jacob Rogers delivers. And it's another ball. Fans are still into it. These Aggies are hoping for ball four here. So Travis Chestnut at the plate with a 3 and 0 count. Take your base, young man. Ball four as Chestnut goes down to first base. And the chance to come alive again here in the Aggie faithful. Rogers in a pickle here, but now what this does, it sets up the force out at home plate. So not the end of the world for the Red Raiders. Rogers just needs to execute pitches and try to get the strikeout here or the ground ball in the infield. Now they're going to talk about their options and they're going to make a pitching change. Yep, Tadlock out of the dugout. He was going to go to his left-hander. He has already made the call. So Tim Tadlock. Yeah, Rogers just struggled a little bit. We'll be back with the pitching change in just a minute. Moderate to severe eczema still disrupts my skin. Despite treatment, it disrupts my skin with itch. It disrupts my skin with rash. But now, I can disrupt eczema with Rinvoke. Rinvoke is not a steroid, topical, or injection. It's one pill, once a day. Many taking Rinvoke saw clear or almost clear skin, while some saw up to 100% clear skin. And they felt dramatic and fast itch relief, some as early as two days. That's Rinvoke relief. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attacks, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Disrupt the itch and rash of eczema. Talk to your doctor about Rinvoke. Learn how Abby can help you save. When you're looking for a new SUV, don't settle for some tired old design. For the freshest SUVs on the road, it has to be Honda. Honda SUVs are bolder and more beautiful than ever, including Ridgeline, Passport, HRV, the all-new CRV, and the totally redesigned Honda Pilot, the biggest, most powerful Honda SUV ever, with more room inside so you can do more outside. So for the freshest SUVs on the road, see your greater Houston Honda dealer today. We have another pitching change. Tim Tadlock has decided to go to his bullpen, and that will be Brendan Lysick coming on, the left-hander, number 43, 
to pitch for the Red Raiders with the Aggies now out in front 3-2 here in the top of the 16th. Yeah, Lysak becomes the eighth Texas Tech pitcher of the night. 6'5", 225 pound sophomore in his second year out of Waldwick, New Jersey. He is a left-handed specialist. He's only pitched a third of an inning in one appearance. Gave up a walk in that appearance. Lysak will have the basis juiced for Ryan Targoch, who's had not had a good night with the bat tonight. Starts him off with a strike. Now, Lysak has got to be thinking strikeout. Infield is in. The pitch. Strike two call. So Targotch is in an 0-2 hole quickly. They're up and in. Off the inside corner. And Targotch is just thinking, trying to get this ball in play. Put a little more pressure on this Red Raider defense. Swung on and fouled off. Just got a little piece of that one. Yep. Hudson White just couldn't hold on. Pitcher for Tech. So the 0-2 delivery on its way. Swung on and fouled away. And that was a fastball dead center. 0-2. Aggies have the bases loaded. Still nobody out here in the top of the 16th inning. Shots on the ground. He comes to the plate, gets one there, goes back. No, he does not go to first. So the bases will still be loaded, but they got the force play at the plate. Well, Targotch put it in play, but great job by Caden the guard to square his feet up and make a strong throw home with the lead runner. So Hunter Haas retired at the plate. And the Red Raiders get that big first out. That was huge because a double play could just take them completely out of this jam here. Warner at the plate for the Aggies, and it's ball one. Trevor Warner. Three, two, Texas A&M has just taken the lead in this ball game. Swung on, hot, in the right field, coming hard. And he'll make the play as Harrelson, but the runner at third tags. The throw to the plate is in time, but he doesn't make the catch. So a great job by Moss sliding in safely to put another run on the board for the Aggies. Yeah, what a great job by Moss. First of all, had to figure out a way to get to the plate when it looked like he was dead to right. Hudson White. Watch that looked throw. Like plenty of time. Harrelson. Yeah, pretty good throw by Gage Harrelson. And one hopper to the plate. Yeah. yeah, Hudson White could just not hold on to it. And Moscow's crashing into him. Of course, White blocking the plate. So Moss ruled safe. Teak said he did touch the plate after that collision. He just couldn't hang on to the ball. So that'll go down as a sack fly for Warner. Aggies now with a two-run lead. Well, that was another good throw. Ball beat him to the plate, and as he whirled the tag, he just could not, never really had it. First pitch is a ball to La Bulette. So the Aggies have come up with a big rally here in the top of the 16th inning. No, this is not a replay, folks. <laughs> Strike call. And heads up base running by both Aggie base runners to move up and advance. Chestnut and Targotch on that throw home. Chestnut moving to third. Targotch is at second base. He came a long way down that line to Chestnut. <laughs> You know, I said good step off. There were some Aggie fans calling for the balk, but stepped off and looked at Chestnut at third base. 
Strike called. Make it one and two. Robbie Led at the plate. Brendan Lysick working on the mound for the Red Raiders. Count moves to 2-2 two -two now. over there at first base by Gavin Cash. He leaped high in the air to stab that line drive, and that will end the threat by Texas A&M, but the Aggies do move out in front. They lead it 4-2 over the Red Raiders. We're coming back. Started when I was at a friend's party. Mia, can you send me that? Sure. Everyone keeps asking. Mia, can you send me that? Even my French neighbor. Mia. Green light. I mean, all the time. Black light. Can you send me that? I'm not making this up. Hey, can you send me that? Everyone. The reviews are in, and everyone loves Season Pass from TXU Energy. 50% off your energy charges all winter and summer. What's not to love? I saved $450 last year. Half off for half the year is a real crowd pleaser. Even when the weather's changing, I'm still saving. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. You can say that again. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. I didn't mean literally. TXU Energy. Energy for everything. Welcome back to Minute Maid Park. We have moved into the bottom of the 16th, and we have a new pitcher brought to you tonight by Honda. It's Justin Lampkin for the Aggies, the freshman from Corpus Christi, Texas. Number 33 is now on the hill, the left-hander for Texas A&M. Yeah, Lampkin has uh, had some great success early on, making his fifth appearance already for the Aggies. 0-1 with a 1.5 earned run average. Has gone six innings, only given up three hits, a couple of walks, seven strikeouts. So opponents batting 136 against him. Yeah, you hate to see Oshenbeck leave, but uh, he pitched four and two-thirds perfect innings. He will be trying to protect a two-run lead for Texas A&M as we move into the bottom of the 16th. It's a 4-2 game. The Aggies have just went out in front in the top of this inning. Oshenbeck pushed four and two-thirds, eight strikeouts. No walks, no hits. 51 pitches, so probably hit his pitch limit, but, uh, man, he was dealing. He sure was. So Harrelson, who made a really great throw while he was from the outfield, could have almost had that runner at the plate. Now he's up at the plate to bat. Gage Harrelson fouls off the first offer. He'll have to do a good stuff. He'll sit 91-93 with a fastball. Got a slider and a changeup. Then we see fastball sliders to the left-handers. Got him with a strike there, so he's down in the count. 0-2 to Justin Lampkin. Outside with the pitch. Lampkin, number 33, swung on and missed. Might have fouled, been a foul tip, but it was caught by the catcher, so he's out. Well, Gage Harrelson goes down swinging. Big out number one for Justin Lampkin and the Aggies. 
fastball just blows right by him. Pitches inside to Kevin Bazell. Bazell hits one high. He's going to hang up there, though, for the left fielder. That is Jace Labulette, and he makes the catch. And now the Aggies are one out away from taking home a victory here in the Shriners Children's College Classic. Number 50 on to pinch hit for the Aggies. That is Woodcox. And Tech down to the last out. Woodcox in the box. Inside pitch there. Make it a one and one count. Give it a 94 that last fastball just missed inside. Lampkin set to deliver. This one swung on and missed. I blew that one right by him. Aggies now one strike away. Texas Tech down to its final strike. Pitch to Bazell, and that one's going to be out of play. Excuse me, uh, Woodcox is the batter, the pinch hitter Woodcox in the game. He has a one and two count from Justin Lampkin. Pitch on the way, and it's a foul ball. Just got a little piece of that. Yeah, he did. Lampkin to tried to backdoor that slider. Woodcox did a good job of just getting a piece of it. Justin Lampkin rocks and delivers, and it's a swing and a miss, and the ball game is over. And Texas A&M came from behind to knock off Texas Tech, your final score. 4-2 here at Minute Maid Park tonight. It was the finale in the Shriners Children's College Classic. And Pat, just give me some of your thoughts on this one because this, this was fantastic. Man, we've got the longest game in Shriners Classic history in Butch. It was a fun time. Great game. What a great tournament in celebration of Shriners Children's. And it's been a great time with you, Butch. Yeah, raised a lot of money. I enjoyed it too, Pat. Thank you a lot. 4-2, a big win tonight by the Aggies. So for Pat Combs, our statistician Bill Cousins, our producer Sam Schrade, and our entire crew, I'm Butch Alcindor saying so long from Minnie Maid Park, where the final score is Texas A&M 4, Texas Tech 2. We went 16 innings. Thank you for watching the 2023 Shriners Children's College Classic. This is Cassie. She never really paid attention to her credit scores until she got Credit Karma and used her scores to score more, like her first ride. When it was time to upgrade, she shopped around for a lower auto insurance rate to go with it. Even when she decided to blaze a new trail, Credit Karma helped her with an auto loan to get her where she was going.